Hey guys how are you what if Naruto was most unique infinite potential and awakens hidden powers of high school DxD, Naruto x Graphia movie. The Bael clan, one of the 72 pillars of the underworld in the highest ranking among them. The Bael held the rank of great king, being born into the clan guarantees you living and enjoying the finest devil society has to offer. Or so that's how it goes if you met two conditions, those conditions being that you inherit the clan's famous power of destruction, this grants the user's immense explosive power that can completely annihilate things when used, the second condition is to be a part of the main family, if you fulfilled both of those conditions then you are almost guaranteed everything your heart desires. However, if you're unfortunate enough to not meet those conditions, you're worth less than garbage in their eyes, some deeming you not even worthy of the ground you walk on, the Bale clan has always been big on tradition, more so than the other clans, their belief is that if you don't possess their abilities you're better off dead than being associated with them. Two such examples of clan members who weren't fortunate enough to meet the conditions were Syroorg Bael, the son of Lord Bael, who was recently sent away along with his mother for not having inherited the power of destruction. The second was a young blonde of eight years old by the name of Naruto. The only son of the now deceased Minato and Kashina of the Bale clan branch family, like Saroorg he didn't inherit the power of destruction and was essentially non-existent to the main members of the clan, however, unlike his fellow clan member he wasn't sent away to one of the properties like Saroorg had been, no he wasn't that lucky unfortunately, when he had asked why this was, all he was told was that Lord Bale owed someone a favor and that was that. Not everyone treated him harshly though, some of the maids of the family were kind enough to keep him well fed whenever they had a chance, anything more than that and they'd potentially be discovered and punished, but for Naruto that wasn't enough to offset being treated like he didn't exist for something he wasn't born with. What was worse was that while all the other kids his age were out getting their evil peace sets from Ajuka Beelzebub, one of the current Satans, all he could do was read old science books the clan didn't care for nor maintain, it really pissed him off, why couldn't he have his own peerage? Even Syroorg, who was considered a failure, got one prior to him being shipped off. So what if he couldn't use that damn power? He could still be strong, had asked them to teach him how to use magic and with that he could be strong and not disgrace the Bile name like they were afraid of, their response? He wasn't worth the effort, even if he learned magic had still be a Bile without the clan's signature ability. Damn them Naruto said angrily as he glared at the mattress he was currently sitting on, his small hands curled into fists as he remembered all the conversations, any time he even tried to initiate a conversation he was told to head to his room, he was honestly surprised he even had a room, granted, it was a room at the furthest end of the manor, in a wing almost nobody visits but still a room. Damn them, he yelled as he began punching the bed with everything he could muster, after five minutes of abusing his mattress he stopped to take a few deep breaths, he righted himself and tried to calm down but found it difficult, looking up his attention was drawn to an old drawer that had been in the room since it became his, he'll show them all, at that point something inside him changed. Almost instinctively he swiped his hand horizontally in the direction of the dresser and watched in awe as the old dresser was sliced clean in half, he looked down at his hand, wondering what had just done, his hand didn't look any different, there was no magic circle in his hand or anything of the sort that could have caused what had happened. He closed his eyes and focused, trying to recreate the feeling had felt when he did it. After 10 minutes he suddenly felt it, it was almost as if he was holding more solid air, upon opening his eyes he noticed the space around his palm was slightly distorted, using his free hand he tried to touch it and noticed that his hand would stop advancing the moment it touches the distorted space, he tried to push a little harder to no avail, all that happened was the slight flashes of purple and green when there was contact. It seemed the closer he tried getting his hands to touch the harder it became, almost as if his hand was somehow slowing down. Unknown to him in the rest of the supernatural world, the moment he unlocked this ability the balance of power in the world shifted dramatically. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
he never practiced them at the clan manor of course, nor did he do it when Lord Bale or the family was around in fear of being discovered before he was strong enough. Instead head leave the manor and train in a secluded area far off in the devil countryside, thankfully no one bothered to look for him, training with his power wasn't the only thing that had happened, one day he stumbled upon a gold mine, while he was training in a no longer used storage room he found a rather interesting looking chess set and old out of date books on basic devil magic, which is how he was able to train in areas far away from the manor and prying eyes. He knew what the chess set was the moment he laid eyes on it as he could feel the aura radiating off of it, it was light, but enough to be felt, it also looked different than the ones had seen others with, this one looked older and the pieces were different in their design, he figured they must have been there for a while considering the amount of dust covering the pieces, it wasn't how he imagined getting an evil piece set but he wasn't complaining. It wasn't difficult to figure out how they worked either, he asked one of the maids that was nice to him and she, knowing he never got a set decided to humor him after he gave her his best pleading look, she explained the ins and outs of the set and how they were used to reincarnate others to help boost the devil population, he also made sure to ask if there were other types of sets, to which she responded that there were. What she described was exactly what had found, Naruto had come across one of the first evil piece sets Ajuka had created. Apparently some sets had side effects and the Bael clan refused to use a potentially faulty set. Those were their own words, instead they kept it stored away until the sets were later refined, the maid also told him that those sets are no longer created and that an old friend of hers died not too long after looking into why exactly the sets were completely overhauled, after that last bit she clammed up and left him alone, after the explanation it only left Naruto with more questions than answers. Following that he made sure to hide the set and continue his secret training, had also made up his mind that he was going to leave the underworld for a while, the moment he discovered the evil piece set the thought had plagued his mind, had leave the prejudice underworld and form the strongest peerage he could. Then had come back and show the Bale clan and everyone who thought like them, meaning almost all of the older families minus one or two, what real power looked like, the thought of the underworld losing their shit at the fact that one of the failures of the Bale clan was one of the strongest was what drove him to continue his harsh training, like it was right now for instance. Naruto had just managed to complete another new technique after days of rigorous training and was working on another, his body hurt, he was tired, and his palm was slightly burned from all the concentrated demonic energy he focused in that area, if he wanted his plan to come to fruition he needed to work through it. As he was about to try again he stopped when he looked at the small clock he had nearby, oh shit it's almost starting, he said to himself, he summoned a magic circle on the ground and sat back as it projected an image in the air, he was really glad had found that old book even if it was outdated, not only was this basic spell good for transportation but broadcasting too. The broadcast he was interested in today was for a rating game. It featured the current rank 2 devil Roygun Belphegor and someone he wasn't familiar with from the Agora's family. Currently the broadcast was showing the people in attendance seeing as the game hadn't started yet, normally games are broadcasted only but on occasions when a highly anticipated matchup is happening, in-person attendance is allowed, though they watch the actual match from a broadcast within the room, those allowed in got to talk with the competitors both before and after a match. The image of the stage flashed for a minute before changing to show two of the four current Satans, Sears X Lucifer and Ajuka Beelzebub, the only two among them that were classified as Super Devil due to their immense power, though they were definitely imposing figures his eyes were drawn to the person standing behind and to the right of Sears X. She was a young looking woman that could pass off for being in her twenties, she had long silver hair, a long braid on each side with small blue bows at the ends, while the rest was let down which ended in twin braids, she had light red eyes and wore a blue and white maid outfit that, even someone as young as him could see, really hugged her figure well. She was easily the most beautiful woman had ever seen, Grafia Lucifuge, had heard about the woman but had never seen her, all he knew was that she was the maid for Sirzex and his family, most believed that they were married but that was disproved when the man himself said he was married to someone else. Even though she was simply standing there with an expressionless look on her face he was captivated, Unfortunately for the young man the stage was ready and the image changed to the competitors all getting in their respective positions, he was even more disappointed however when the match actually began. He thought someone challenging Belphegor must have had some power or strategy to be confident enough to try him, that didn't seem to be the case as within the first 10 minutes Roygun was dominating the game, he stopped the broadcast and stood up, he couldn't watch that any longer. Might as well continue training, he murmured to himself, I am close, I can feel it, I can't work here though he once again summoned a magic circle but this time used it to teleport himself away, he reappeared in the same secluded field had been using for the past couple of years, it was the perfect place to work on his more, powerful techniques. Naruto closed his eyes and brought his right hand up, palm facing upwards and took a few deep breaths, 
here we go he began channeling energy and felt the space around him begin shifting, if one were to be there with him they'd see four beams of red light begin to spiral around his palm until they reached a single point above it, a small red orb formed and began glowing brightly. The blonde could feel himself starting to sweat and began to feel himself losing it, oh shit. He yelled as the energy became unstable within the orb and dispersed with a small pop of energy, unknown to him it let off a little more power than he imagined. Damn he grunted in frustration as he sat down, still can't get that damn thing to work he added as he stared at his palm, wondering what was going wrong, not even a minute passed before he sensed someone behind him, he briefly panicked, hoping it wasn't anyone from the Bael clan, upon turning around and seeing who it was his mouth went dry. Standing not more than five feet away from him was the silver-haired beauty Grafia, he watched as she scanned the environment quickly before her eyes locked onto him, hello she greeted, even her voice was silky smooth, are you the one who caused the explosion? She asked. Her face still showed no emotion so he couldn't tell if she was upset. Explosion. Was she talking about his technique popping? He could only nod. I wasn't expecting a child to be the one to produce that much power, I am actually quite impressed. What's your name? Naruto Bael. Of course he didn't expect her to know who he is since the clan never spoke about him, he half expected her to tell him that she's never heard of him but she didn't. How did you do it? Show me. She ordered softly. Naruto didn't really want to show anyone his abilities just yet but he knew he couldn't refuse her order, she was stronger than him and could force him if need be, he sighed and went through the motions once more, the red orb once again manifested in his palm and similar to last time once it began glowing he lost it, letting off another burst of energy. He looked back at her after his failed attempt to see what her reaction would be, to his disappointment she still had no readable expression, interesting, she commented before turning and preparing a magic circle underneath her now that she found the source of the energy wait. Naruto called out to her before she could disappear. Yes? What is it? She asked as she turned back to look at him. Can you please not tell anyone that it was me that caused you to come here? I'd rather not have people know I can do this yet, he asked, giving her the most pleading look he could muster. The older woman stared at him for a second before the first flash of emotion passed through her face, amusement. She was actually amused at his distress, perhaps, what's in it for me? He blinked, that wasn't one of the responses he was expecting, what? You're asking me to keep this from my employer, I am sure this is something they'd like to be aware of, it seems important to you that this be kept a secret, so he'll ask again, what's in it for me? She asked, though you couldn't see it anymore he knew she was enjoying this. Well, I don't have much now but if you keep it to yourself he'll, buy you dinner one day, anywhere you want no matter how expensive, he really hoped she would go for it, if she didn't and the Bale clan found out about his power he was sure they'd try and see what else he was hiding he couldn't risk them finding out that he had an old evil piece set. To his surprise and delight Grafia smiled slightly, very well, he'll hold you to that, don't think he'll forget, she replied, right before she disappeared however, she spoke again, also, perhaps try to continue to compress the energy a little more, maybe it'll help you, with that she disappeared. The blonde stared at the spot where she stood before looking back at his hand, compress more her head try that tomorrow and hope it worked. Another four years quickly passed by and in that time his power only continued to grow, had made immense progress with most of the abilities he had, he even managed to complete two of the more complex techniques had been working on and started on another which in essence combined them, Grafia's advice that day four years ago did wonders for him. Speaking of the beautiful woman he hadn't seen her since the day she went to investigate the explosion had set off, had held on to the hope that maybe he'd see her again soon but it was not to be, it was to be expected though considering her position, on the bright side she did keep her word. The Bale clan still believed him to be powerless, it made his day-to-day -day life at home infuriating but it worked out well for him, he was still overlooked and ignored for the most part, on occasion Lord Bale would see him and condescendingly ask how he's doing, it took every bit of willpower not to erase him from existence. All of that wouldn't matter anymore though, as he was completely ready to head out, had originally planned on leaving the underworld two years ago but reconsidered, while he may be strong he knew that if he wanted the strongest members to be in his peerage, they would need an incredibly strong leader, so he postponed leaving until he felt he was at a level that could be taken more seriously by potential members. Now that he had much better control over his abilities he knew it was time, he took a look at his room for what would be the last time, checking to see if there was anything of importance to take with him, apart from the clothes on his back, no there wasn't, he summoned his magical circle which had since changed to have a swirl pattern and disappeared. Eight years later, Kuo. Well guys I think it's just about time we call in that favor from Rias don't you? The now 24 year old Naruto asked the other two occupants of the room he was in. Will it take long? One of the two men replied, 
Though by the sound of his voice one could tell he was young, I have a club orientation I need to attend. It should NT. Naruto replied, if it looks like it will, he'll have one of the others take you, what club did you join anyways? The boy hesitated before answering, the body improvement club, he answered hoping they wouldn't laugh, they didn't. Sounds good to me, the other man replied, I wonder how they'll react seeing me in the underworld, if we're lucky maybe a battle will break out, he added with glee. Probably not but we never know, well then, let's go. The three disappeared via magic circle and reappeared a second later within the halls of what appeared to be a prestigious school, luckily for them though no one was around at this time since classes had ended about an hour ago. I was kind of worried that someone would still be here, itd be a pain having to wipe their memories, Naruto commented, he knocked twice on the door until a female voice told them to enter, the trio walked in and the blonde took a second to inspect the room as they approached the woman, it was a Victorian themed room with a large desk near the wall two small couches facing each other with a small coffee table separating them. Though that wasn't what drew the eyes of whoever visited, why is there a shower in this room? The youngest of the three asked. When you're in charge of a portion of a city and your brother is one of the most important figureheads of the underworld you can have almost anything you want, Naruto replied. Hello again Naruto, all three men's attention went from glancing around the room to the person sitting behind the desk. She was a young woman of about 17, she wore the standard Kuo High School women's uniform which consisted of a white long sleeve shirt with a black ribbon on her shirt collar, along with a small black cape draped over her shoulders, one of her most distinct features however was her long crimson hair, the other being the size of her chest which seemed like it gave the shirt trouble containing it, her name was Rias Grimori, heiress of the Grimori clan and younger sister of Sears X Lucifer. She wasn't alone however as standing beside her was another young woman who wore the same uniform as Rias, though she had long black hair that was done in a ponytail being held in place by an orange ribbon, unlike Rias she had a teasing look on her face, he didn't know if that was a facade or if it was always like that, this is Rias queen, Akino Himahima. I am sorry but I don't know your companions, she said looking over at the two men besides him. Rias, Akino, Naruto nods in acknowledgement, these two are a part of my peerage, he motioned to the younger one on his right hand side, this is Shigeo Kagiyama but we all call him Mob, he's one of my pawns, he introduced, the boy looked like an ordinary middle schooler dressed in the typical black button up and matching black pants, he had nothing that would make him stand out as his face was blank as can possibly be. The young man bowed slightly to the two women in greeting. This here is one of my strongest members and one of my knights. Perhaps you've heard of him. Grimjow Jagerjakes, he said motioning towards the much taller peerage member. The man was much taller and muscular than his fellow peerage member and looked much different as well. He had blue hair and blue eyes, and wore a black shirt with most of the chest open revealing a red scar, all underneath an open white jacket with the sleeves rolled up to just below his elbows, two white belts were fitted at his waist, one keeping his pants up, the other holding his katana on his left side, the most noticeable thing though was the bone-like fragment sitting on the right side of his jaw and green markings below his eyes. The two young women looked at the man before shaking their heads negative, sorry but no. Inwardly Naruto shook his head in disbelief, they really didn't keep up with what goes on in the world, anyways I am surprised to see you here today, did you need something? She asked breaking him from his thoughts. Yes actually, I'd like to call in that favor from the other day he explained casually as the three took a seat. Rias nodded and sat up a bit straighter in her seat. Very well, I am a woman of my word, what would you like? She asked curiously. I need an audience with your older brother within the next two hours, by the look on her face it was clearly not one of the things she imagined had asked for. While I am grateful that you helped me secure a powerful member into my peerage, I don't think that warrants an audience with one of the Satans, he's a very busy man, isn't there anything else you'd like? Money perhaps, she asked, hoping something would catch his attention. Naruto leaned back into the couch, a pensive look on his face, he rubbed his chin in thought and snapped his fingers when he got an idea, how about a wager? The redhead looked intrigued and motioned him to continue, how about you and your peerage take on mob, if you win, he'll give you one of my peerage members, but if I win you call your brother and let me talk to him, he'll arrange everything myself, he offered, knowing damn well they wouldn't beat him. The two women glanced at each other before looking at Mob at the same time, you can tell your brother I have news concerning the infinite dragon god, I am sure he'll be interested in meeting with me, he said, gaining their attention briefly, they went back to staring at the young boy who stared back with a blank look on his face. The king and queen duo smiled at the same time and nodded, very well, we can do this out back, 
he'll summon the rest of my peerage and we can do this, the blonde nodded and motioned for the two men to follow him out. Once we're done here you can go back and get ready for your club meeting. Mob smiled and nodded, eager to start improving himself. Within five minutes the rest of Rhea's peerage was assembled and stood before them. There was a young brown-haired boy who wore the male version of the school uniform, though he didn't attend the school. Naruto was sure that having a red shirt underneath the school blazer had to be against the dress code, the boy finished the look with matching black pants and shoes. Next to him was another young man though this one was a blonde who had a more confident look on his face, he too wore the boy's uniform though he actually wore it properly, a white short sleeve button up and black pants and black shoes, if the swords being conjured around him were, any indication head say this was her knight. Finally the shortest member of her peerage by far was a young looking girl with white hair styled in such a fashion that it looked like she had cat ears, her yellow eyes also gave a cat-like impression, other than not filling out her uniform like the other two women she wore exactly the same thing as them. Allow me to introduce you to my peerage, Rias began, you've met Issei, she motioned to the brown haired boy, Yudo Kiba, my knight, Kaniko Tuho my rook. A pleasure, Naruto greeted, now if you don't mind could we get started. Mob here has a club meeting to attend at his school and I'd hate to be the reason he's late. Rias nodded and stood in front of her peerage while Naruto and Grimjow stepped back a few feet, you think they'll make the kid try? Grimjow asked in a bored tone as he stuffed his hands into his pockets, he observed every member of her peerage and not one managed to impress him. Naruto smiled as Mob looked back to give them a thumbs up, not even a little bit, everyone ready. Begin. The first to attack was Issei which considering had only been a devil for a few days, impressed him slightly, but that confidence to attack was the only thing that impressed him, no doubt he attacked because he didn't see Mob as too big a threat considering his small stature, a reasonable, if not incorrect assumption. Though Mob didn't have an imposing figure he was by no means weak, he has powerful telekinetic powers which were actually one of the reasons he ended up joining his peerage, the poor boy lost control one day when in an emotional state and his body couldn't handle the pushback, Naruto offered the boy a second chance to live in exchange for his help and the boy agreed. Mob tilted his head aside as Issei threw a sloppy punch and placed his hand on his back when the boy's momentum kept him moving forward, Mob's hand glowed for a split second before Issei was violently tossed through the air hard enough to knock over a tree and slam into another one. Everyone looked over to see that the poor boy wasn't getting back up, the brief movement of his chest told them he was alive so they continued. There's one down, Naruto commented, Kiba was the next to attack. The difference in speed was on clear display as he dashed towards Mob much faster than Issei and slashed horizontally, the black-haired boy ducked and racied his arm towards Issei before swiping at the air. Issei once again soared through the air but was caught by Kiba who had to stop his second slash to make sure his friend wasn't hurt even more, in his distracted state Kiba didn't notice his tie begin to glow and wrap around his neck and start to squeeze, without even turning his head he raised his hand and caught a punch from the woman's rook. Luckily he now had devil strength reinforcing his body as the blow was strong enough to crack the ground beneath him. It's almost sad to watch isn't it? Grimjow asked rhetorically, a middle schooler is making quick work of them, you'd think someone related to a satan would have stronger members with them. Naruto nodded as he watched Mob continue to simply catch the young girl's attacks while continually choking Kiba, it's to be expected really, he chuckled watching the three get tossed aside, she's focused on getting out of an arranged marriage from what Syroorg told me. The blue-haired man scoffed she's gonna end up paying for that in the future for not focusing on training them. Yeah but it's not our problem, they noticed Mob pull his phone out of his pocket and his eyes widened, it's over, sure enough even as Akano and Rias tried blitzing him with lightning and the power of destruction it was a futile effort as with the bare minimal effort, he held his hand out and blasted them away. Kid didn't even move from where he started Grimjow muttered to himself in disappointment at what had just witnessed. Naruto shook his head as well do me a favor and take Mob to his club and then meet up at the house, gather everyone. The man nodded but grumbled something inaudible while Naruto walked over to the downed redhead, you all right there? Man you guys got roughed up, he teased. We got beat by a middle schooler, she said in embarrassment, was he trying at all? She asked, hoping to get some of her dignity back. Oh no not at all, oi Mob. Before you go what percentage were you on? Naruto questioned. About 3% the boy replied before disappearing with Grimjow. Naruto looked back at the now mortified woman, yeah that's pretty sad, anyway, mind getting in touch with Lucifer? Rias huffed, fine, she brought her hand up and summoned a small red magical circle that she then put up to her ear, she didn't speak for well over a minute and he began to think maybe he'd have to find another way to get the mon's attention, luckily he didn't have to dwell on it for long as the woman began speaking. Please stop, you're so embarrassing, she complained into the circle, no I have someone here who says they need to speak with you about Ophis, 
Naruto looked on as she became silent and asked if he was still there, she held her hand out and the circle began to glow before a voice came through. Can you hear me? The voice of a man rang out, we can. Great, however you happen to have me at a disadvantage, you know my name but I don't know to whom I am speaking with. Naruto Bael, though I've since abandoned that name and go by Uzumaki these days, he answered ignoring Ria's shocked look at the mention of his name. A pleasure, now I was told you had information regarding Ophis? That's correct, though would it be possible to have this conversation in person? The information is quite sensitive and there is another matter entirely I'd like to discuss with you. I should have an opening in about two hours or so, if that works for you I can arrange my Queen Grafia to pick you up from the academy, what luck that in two hours had have an opening. That's perfect, though would you mind if I brought my peerage along? It should nt be a problem, well then, I'll see you here, the circle disappeared from Rhea's hand and he stood up from his crouched position. He looked to see everyone finally regaining their bearing and beginning to stand up, well it looks like you guys are alright, I'll see you around, giving them a small wave he summoned his own magical circle beneath him and disappeared. He reappeared in the center of a giant living room of the compound had purchased here in Kuo, it was a giant three-story mansion that easily housed all of his peerage members, plus there were still other buildings around that were used for training, storage, and anything else they might need. Speaking of peerage members, didn't I tell him to gather them? Naruto said to himself slightly annoyed that they weren't here, oi, everyone down here now. Within seconds all of his pieces were in attendance, everyone was either taking a seat on one of the many couches around the TV or standing in the case of Grimjow. He wanted to smile in glee, it was finally time for him and his peerage to make their underworld debut, he was excited to see how they would react to certain members, they would for sure throw a fit, he glanced at everyone making sure he had their complete attention. First was his knight Grimjow Jaegerjakes, labeled a triple S class criminal by the yokai faction and was one of the most powerful yokai born in recent years. Next was his second knight and one of his more calm and collected members who was currently sitting down drinking a cup of tea. His attire consists of a wide-brimmed black hat decorated with a large plume, and a long, open black coat with no shirt underneath, with red, flower-patterned sleeves and collar, he has a small golden cross necklace that hides a small dagger, he has light purple pants tucked into a pair of black boots, the most eye-catching thing about him however was the giant black blade that rests on his back, though at the moment it was leaning against the couch. He was a wandering swordsman looking for a good challenge, the humans he faced didn't last a minute against him and the few supernatural swordsmen he fought didn't do much better, he originally declined the invitation to join but after being told of master class swordsmen that the stronger devils had in their peerage he agreed, he hoped to find a challenge and trusted Naruto would get him one, his name is Dracul Mahak. Next up was one of his shorter, more cheerful members. A young magician blessed with great magical power, the downside was that she could only cast one technique. That being an explosion, because of that she was deemed useless by her peers and was excommunicated from the magician faction. She set out to get stronger and prove them wrong, she had the look of a cartoon witch, she wears a black cloak with a gold border, a black choker, and a red long sleeve dress that stopped just below the waist, one leg was bandaged and the other had a black high sock, she had her own notable trait, that being the eye patch covering her left eye, she claimed it sealed her power but everyone knew she thought it just looked cool, her name is Megaman, his bishop. The next woman was his second bishop, unlike her younger counterpart she was taller and older, she wore very revealing clothing for which she was often berated by another member of the peerage, she wore a pair of thigh high purple socks along with a pair of matching purple panties, she had a small purple vest that covered her breasts and had light fur at the neck as well as purple gloves, she had short black hair and gold eyes along with a mysterious aura about her. Like him her ability was also called infinity, though it worked in a different sense, her spells could last forever after being cast, she accepted his offer of joining as she saw him as a rare individual due to his abilities and the mystery surrounding them, her name was Merlin, one of the strongest mages alive. Next was his first rook, a rowdy and short-tempered woman who was always looking for the next fight. She had overwhelming fire magic that could put even a volcano to shame which has only been further enhanced with her devil piece. She usually liked to form her attacks into the shape of feline animals such as lions panthers and cheetahs and was even able to completely engulf herself in fire to increase her physical abilities. She was an average sized woman with blue eyes and long, wavy vermilion colored hair, her most interesting features were red markings accenting her eyes and one sharp canine tooth sticking out her lip, she wore a white tunic, covered by a long dark blue shirt with her keeping the sleeves long with a high collar, she wore a purple sash around her waist with white trousers, with her wearing a long red cape, her name was Mero Leona Vermilion, a ferocious and dangerous fire mage. Next up was his second rook, an extremely dangerous human turned devil, he used to be a mercenary for hire and one of the best blacksmiths in the world, 
enough where he was able to imbue a six-foot-long greatsword with magic where it was able to kill angels, fallen angels, yokai and devils, he joined because he was betrayed by his best friend who proceeded to rape then kill his girlfriend while he watched then tore out his eye and cut off one of his arms as a reminder. The man was 65 easily being one of the tallest members there while he had short spiky black hair resembling a crew cut with a few bangs hanging down. With a small tuft of white hair on his head, he was easily one of the most scarred people there also with him missing one eye which stayed forever closed with a scar across his nose and having a mechanical arm in place of his flesh one. He was covered from neck down in midnight scaled armor while he sat in a love chair sharpening his massive blade, this was Guts, considered one of the strongest humans in history before turning into a devil and known for his legendary dragon slayer sword and berserker armor that gave him the appearance of a demonic dog, Wolf. Finally there were his pawns, though they were pawns they were anything but disposable. First was a tall man in a white military style suit with a double breasted jacket on, he had two red armbands with a skull on them on each band, he had small bolts in his ears as earrings as well as a red mohawk, he was a member of a human faction, named Quincy's, who had the ability to use the spirit energy in the air and convert it into weapons and in his case create devastating fire attacks, his name was Bazard Black, aka Baz B. Next up was a young man of about 17 with two-tone black and pink hair, he was actually killed by his own sacred gear that housed a demon inside of it, upon reviving him the demon made a pact with him, once he regains his strength they'll battle it out, if he wins he removes the evil piece, if he loses he allows free use of his power to its host Itadori Yuji. The next was a young martial artist with a terrible fashion sense, he wore a green bodysuit with orange weights at the legs, he had a bowl cut and large eyebrows, as a failed magician due to the lack of actual magic he was ridiculed and belittled, he joined after seeing that both he and Naruto were both looked down upon for things out of their control. Next up was a young looking woman with long grey hair and a black bodysuit that stopped just above her knees, she was a human hitman who was hired to kill Naruto after had cleaned out a casino in Vegas, she was the only member who, because she targeted him, was offered to join him after being beaten down or die, having given her a good thrashing she agreed saying that she'd get him back eventually. After her was a blonde tan skinned woman, she wore a short white jacket zipped up that covered the bottom portion of her face and barely managed to cover her breasts, it also showed her stomach area, she had short blonde hair that also had three small braids, she was a former high ranking officer of the yokai faction who left after the higher ups sent her three best friends on a suicide mission, her name, Tyr Haribel. The next one was an older blonde woman, though her appearance didn't show it, she wore a green robe over a sleeveless white shirt held together by a sash, she had a small diamond symbol in the center of her forehead that actually radiated power, she was the peerage's doctor as well as self-proclaimed mother as she was always the one berating members when they acted out of line. Next was another blonde haired woman though considerably shorter than the last, she wore a pink and white dress and had her hair styled into two pigtails, she joined on the promise of being able to collect rare stones that weren't found on earth, in exchange shed lend the group her immense power, her name is Biscuit Kruger aka Bisky. Finally there was his queen, she has very long white hair and possessed white clear eyes, her eyebrows were cut very short and round, a symbol of nobility, and she wore a red shade of lipstick on her lips, she wore a white kimono with tomo symbols running down the middle, the most noticeable trait she possessed was the horns that sat atop her head, the former right hand of God alongside Michael who disappeared from heaven soon after his death, her name. Kagaya Otsutsuki. So what is it? Baz B asked as he munched on some chips. We're heading to the underworld in two hours, Naruto stated simply it's time to finally start moving. The girl was that easy to convince? Biski asked as she patted her dress down to remove chip crumbs while glaring at Baz. Naruto shook his head, she refused at first but we came to an agreement, Mob beat her and her peerage and she agreed to call Sirzex, I then secured a meeting between us, clear your schedules and be ready to depart. Tsunade glanced around the room what about Mob? He's not here, she asked not knowing he had after school activities. He has some things to take care of at school, so he won't be joining us, everyone nodded and went back to whatever it is they were doing before being called, likewise he headed upstairs to his room to change clothing. Two hours later everyone was ready to go, rather than his super casual clothes he now wore a black shirt underneath a black jacket that had fur along the neck along with red criss cross patterns down the front, he had matching black pants along with black shoes with a light red checkmark looking logo along the sides, they were all gathered inside the club room and were waiting for their pickup. They didn't have to wait too long as a red magical circle materialized a few feet away from them, Naruto noticed Grafia did not look a day older than the last time had seen her. If everyone is ready we can leave at once, she said, looking at Naruto, he nodded and watched as the red circle grew in size until it could accommodate everyone, in a split second their surroundings changed, 
everyone glanced around the new area to see lavish looking artwork along the walls depicting different scenes in history, giant stone pillars that made the place look even more extravagant were all over the place as well. This way please, the silver haired woman called out as she began leading them, following behind her the young blonde couldn't help but trail his eyes from the top of her head down to her backside, as he stared for a few seconds he couldn't help but feel eyes on him from either side of him, sure enough Grimjow and Baz B had made their way next to him and were both looking at him. None of the men spoke but all three grinned at the same time, they had to wipe those off their faces though as they reached a large door and Grafia turned around, the satans are expecting you, please enter, she said as she opened the door for them. The blonde walked forward but stopped just as he was about to pass her, mind if I have a word with you for a minute after the meeting? After she nodded in agreement he headed inside, his peerage following behind him, upon entering he saw all four of the current satans sitting around a large conference table with one empty seat available, whether that was always there or it was put in for this meeting he wasn't sure. Seeing everyone come in all four stood up, a small gesture they didn't have to do considering their status in the underworld but it was appreciated, first was the current Lucifer, Sirzex who looked like an older male version of his sister. Ajuka Beelzebub the green-haired genius and creator of the evil peace set. Seraphal Leviathan, former heiress of the Seatree clan and wielder of powerful ice magic. Finally Falbium Asmodeus, former member of the Glacia Labalas clan. Mr. Uzumaki welcome, Sirzex greeted, I have to say when you said you were bringing your peerage I didn't expect a notorious criminal, and higher up from heaven, he added looking at Grimjow and Kagaya. No one does but they're not all bad, you have my word they won't do any harm or cause any problems, Naruto placated, the satans all looked to the blue haired man who stared back without flinching, he looked uninterested on the outside but on the inside he really hoped he could get a fight with one of the four strongest in the underworld. They nodded and sat down, I am glad, please have a seat, now I don't wish to sound rude, we do have a few other meetings to get to today so if you don't mind we'd like to start. Naruto smiled and sat down, straight to the point, I like it, I'll be honest it's not the main thing I wanted to discuss but well start with Ophis, he said leaving them slightly curious as to what could be more important to him. I have it on good authority that Ophis has created a group to try and kick Great Red out of the dimensional gap, they go by the Chaos Brigade, the group consists of devils, fallen angels, yokai, magicians, you name it they're probably already a part of it, a lot of them have powerful sacred gears. The satans could see why he brought this to their attention, a group like this banding together couldn't be up to anything good, the blonde continued chances are most of these people have their own agendas, in fact the one we interrogated was working for Croisery Asmodeus. That managed to really get their attention, so the old satan faction is a part of the group as well, Ajuka began while rubbing his chin in thought. Seraphal nodded, an uncharacteristically serious look on her face chances or they'll begin targeting us in the near future. The blonde nodded at their words, Ophis most likely doesn't care what her members do as long as Red is out, I wouldn't be surprised if some devils from the underworld are already a part of the group honestly. We can't rule that possibility out, we'll have to discuss this further until we can come up with a way to find out for sure, Sirzex replied. I have a question for you if you wouldn't mind, Falbium said, speaking for the first time, at the blonde's nod he continued, what do you gain by bringing this to our attention? Don't get me wrong I speak for all of us when I say we're grateful for the information but what do you get out of this? Everyone turned back to see Naruto lean back slightly in his chair and smile, that's actually linked to what else I wanted to talk about, I'd like to establish a clan in the underworld, as I told you earlier I've since disconnected myself with the Bael name. There's a condition that needs to be met to be recognized as an extra demon clan as none can be added to the existing 72 pillars, Seraphal began explaining. That condition is that the clan in question needs to possess a devil ability unique to your clan. A condition I fulfill, the blonde replied, you've inherited the Bael clan's power of destruction? Ajuka asked. He shook his head negative, no, I have something else entirely, he replied while holding out his right hand in front of Sirzex, go on and touch my hand. The two super devils glanced at each other for a split second, a silent conversation passing between the two before the man did as he was requested. Everyone watched in fascination as the Satan's hand stopped a few inches away as an invisible barrier prevented him from making contact. The Uzumaki clan has control over infinity, Sirzex pulled his hand back and was going to respond but stopped as someone walked into the meeting room. As if personally invited, Lord Bael walked straight into the room, if the look on the four devils' faces were anything to go off of head say this had happened before, they all looked irritated but tried to hide it. Lord Bael, Sirzex said in a strong tone, we're currently in an important meeting. I understand, however, the man trailed off as his eyes landed on the blonde with them, what is this thief doing here? He asked, looking straight at Naruto. Excuse me? Naruto asked, playing stupid, 
This only seemed to enrage the man further much to his enjoyment. Don't play coy with me boy. You stole an evil piece set belonging to the clan before you ran away from the manor. He complained before looking back to the Satans. Sirzex I demand this failure be taken in immediately. While he and Sirzex began to go back and forth, the latter doing everything in his power to remain calm. Naruto looked to Ajuka who as if he felt his gaze turned to look at him, making sure his hand was out of view of Lord Bael so only Ajuka could see he summoned a small item into his hand. As expected the green-haired Mon's eyes widened ever so slightly until Naruto sealed it away again, immediately the man coughed into his hand twice to get their attention. Lord Bael, I believe because this is a matter between two clan members it would be in everyone's best interest to let the two of you sort it out amongst yourselves as long as no one else is involved. Again he shared a look with his best friend who'd turned to look at him questioningly after his declaration. The head of the Bael clan seemed shocked by the turn of events but eventually smiled as if an idea had just popped into his mind, between us you say. Very well, boy, come to the manor tonight, if you don't you'll have more than just me to worry about, with his piece said he turned around and left the room. I take it you two don't get along? Seraphal asked jokingly. The others shook their heads at the obvious statement, well begin the necessary steps to introduce a new clan and well be in touch, ill be honest, your ability has me intrigued. Sirzak said with Ajuka mirroring his opinion. The blonde stood up and nodded, thank you for your time, as they began leaving he made eye contact with the silver-haired woman who nodded back to him. You guys head back, I'll see you in a little bit, the moment his peerage disappeared he heard the door behind him open then close. You've grown, he turned to see Grafia standing behind him, her hands clasped in front of her, both in body and power, she finished. Naruto turned to face her completely. Once I was strong enough to fend for myself I was able to leave and train without the fear of being caught. Does that mean you were able to complete the technique I caught you practicing all those years ago? She asked curiously. Completely mastered it, but anyway I wanted to thank you for keeping your word and not telling anyone about what you saw. I only said it was a kid practicing magic and it got out of control, it wasn't questioned. Regardless, you kept your word and if I recall correctly I promised to take you to dinner if you did, I'd like to make good on that, he offered hoping she'd be willing. Like last time he was sure he saw a flash of a smile appear before it was gone, very well, I'll have some free time in about two hours. He wanted to cheer but managed to contain himself, perfect, I can take care of the Bael fiasco after dinner, also where will we be going? He asked to make sure he dressed for the occasion. If I recall it was wherever I wanted, you'll find out when we get there, dress formally and meet me at the front door of this building, she said before bowing and heading back inside. Once she was gone he left the building to make sure he knew where he was so he could teleport himself back when the time came. The rest of the day passed by in a blur for him, after heading back home he showered making sure he didn't miss a spot and was currently standing in front of a mirror fixing himself up, his 12 year old self would never believe that had actually get a date with the women but here he was, he was now in an all black suit with a white button up shirt being the only non black item, after letting Tsunade make sure everything looked okay and he smelled good he was off. The young man almost lost the ability to speak when she appeared just seconds after him, rather than the maid uniform he had seen her in she now wore a tight white dress that ended just above her knees along with a pair of black heels that added a couple inches to her height, the dress did a damn good job highlighting her curves, he thought, he also couldn't help but notice it showed a nice bit of cleavage. Wow, you look beautiful, he complimented, thank you, you clean up well yourself, come now, she told him as she took him by the arm and teleported them to where they would be eating. The two arrived at a grandiose looking restaurant where upon entering, the waiter's eyes lit up in shock, he was clearly not expecting someone like her to show up. The man immediately came up to them and took them to where they'd be seated and told them he'd be back shortly. The two settled in and skimmed the menu looking for something good, Naruto noticed a lot of the items were on the expensive side, luckily had taken money from any and all stray devils had come across in his time away, the two made small talk going over what they'd been up to in recent years, Naruto explained where had been, how he recruited some of his members, and a little insight on his abilities. Likewise Grafia also answered most of the questions he had regarding her job and what life was like being in the peerage of a Satan, he was glad that she let the emotionless facade she put up drop while here, she was attentive, listening to him as he spoke and asking questions when she was intrigued about something, she even outright laughed when she found something funny, her laugh was music to his ears. Even after they finished their food the two remained sitting, simply enjoying each other's company. Naruto had been slightly worried that she'd be blank faced the entire time and leave after eating, but thankfully that wasn't the case. This place was amazing, the blonde commented, patting his stomach, you have good taste. It's a favorite of mine, she replied as she wiped her mouth with one of the napkins. Then would you be open to letting me take you out again sometime? He asked, throwing caution to the wind, 
if he didn't try now he might not get another chance soon. She smiled while I would enjoy that. Unfortunately my position doesn't leave me much time for a romantic relationship, as queen of the current Lucifer as well as the maid I deal with many important people in the underworld as well as set up meetings, today was a rare exception. Naruto tapped his chin in thought, so you're saying if you weren't in that position you'd be open to trying something? I would, she admitted I haven't been out to enjoy myself in years and this was very enjoyable, I would love to go out again but my job doesn't allow me the time, she said hoping he wouldn't be too down about it. So all I have to do is have Sirzex release you from both of your positions, he said as if it was the simplest thing in the world. She laughed softly at his nonchalant attitude, it won't be that simple, apart from helping the Satans with their day-to-day -day duties I am a powerful part of Sirzex peerage, he won't be willing to let me go so easily. What if he didn't have a choice? He said, raising a finger in the air. Explain, she ordered, now curious to see what he had in mind, Shed expected him to be let down and maybe even a little sad but this wasn't what she expected. What if he lost a wager in front of everyone and he then had no choice? The woman blinked before realization hit her, a rating game. He nodded, if I challenge him for you and he agrees he'd have no choice after losing. That's a large task, why go so far for me after only one date? She questioned, while she knew a lot of men found her beautiful she didn't know how many of them would be willing to go so far as to think about challenging Sears ex Lucifer just for her. To put it simply I like you. Not just because you're unbelievably beautiful but because in the last hour or so I found that you're funny, interesting, and not to mention I know you're powerful, I'd like to see where this could go, he admitted. I am flattered, she said softly however challenging Sirzex won't be that easy, as it stands only the current first rank of the rating games has the privilege to challenge a Satan to a match, currently it's Dehauser Belial and he seems to have no interest in doing so, she informed him. Naruto sat back in his chair and narrowed his eyes slightly at the information. So I need to take down Dehauser before I can reach Sirzex, hum, sounds doable, if that's what it takes then so be it, he said flashing her a winning smile, one that she reciprocated. Very well, if you believe you can pull it off I'll be waiting for you, the two left soon after their conversation and headed back to their respective homes, though he wished he could simply lay down and relax after a great date, he had one more stop to make. He headed back to his peerage to round them up and change back into his clothing he wore when meeting the Satans and teleported to the Bael clan manor. Nostalgic. Merlin asked with a teasing smile, nah, I hated this place, he moved forward and walked in similar to how Lord Biel entered the meeting room earlier in the day, to his immense luck most of the maids that treated him relatively well when he was younger were present, if the looks on their faces were anything to go by, they at least recognized him, excuse me, where can I find the head of the clan? He should be expecting us. One of the maids he didn't recognize stepped forward and led them to where the man was, they arrived at a brown door and were told to head inside, without so much as another glance the woman left. Everyone stepped inside and saw the man sitting behind a large black desk, a stack of papers sitting atop it, unlike the Satans who were courteous enough to stand, he didn't. Before even being told to sit down the blonde grabbed the chair in front of him and dropped down onto it before crossing his legs, I would say it's nice to see you but that would be a lie, he said which seemed to annoy the man. Look boy, Beelzebub is having a settle this among ourselves, so I've come up with something that can clear this whole thing up, the man paused to take in their reactions. Well? Spit it out Baz B barked at him, already annoyed by the dramatics of the man, had already made an ass of himself earlier this was just making him look worse. The man narrowed his eyes at the mohawk having man but turned his attention back to the blonde, seeing as you stole our evil peace set, why not put them to use? Well have a rating game in a week's time between you and a champion of my choice to represent me, should you lose you'll have your pieces stripped and you lot will be executed, he told them, not bothering to hide his malicious smile. Who's the champion? As he finished asking, a green clan symbol appeared on the ground next to Lord Bael revealing a blonde man who seemed to be in his thirties, he wore standard nobleman's attire and looked at them with a look of contempt. Just on time, let me introduce you to the man ranked third in the rating games, Badiz Abbott and the man in question continued to look at them like they were less than filth, kind of like how the Bael clan looked at him most of the time. Listen here brats, the rating games are a noble's form of entertainment for the upper class, low class reincarnated devils who don't have talent, wealth, or status have no business involving themselves in the games, be honored you'll be sharing the arena with me, even if it's only to embarrass yourselves, he spat. While the man was droning on, Naruto had tuned him out, instead replaying the words Grafia had told him earlier today, only the current first rank could challenge a Satan to a match, if I am risking execution then I have my own stipulation, unless you're afraid your man will lose, that seemed to piss Abaddon off seeing as he took a step forward, luckily he was stopped by Lord Bael as Grimjow had already reached for his blade. 
The man nodded for him to continue, if I win, no matter in what way, I become the new third rank, the man didn't hesitate to agree, seeing that they had come to an agreement he stood and motioned for everyone to follow. As they left the office the ever quiet Mahawk spoke what an insufferable man. Being in the same room as him had me itching for Dragonslayer guts grunted out, glad to be away from the arrogant devil before he did something drastic. I know what you mean, it was getting hard to block out my sacred gears voice in my head telling me to kill him, Itadori added. I was this close to blasting a hole through the fucker's head, Baz commented as he held his thumb and index finger together to show how close he was. So how are we going to handle him? Haribel asked as they reappeared in their home. The smile Naruto let appear on his face was just as malevolent as the one Lord Bile had shot at them, you guys are going to thoroughly humiliate his peerage while I handle him, the rating game automatically removes you when you're no longer lit to compete, I am going to kill him before it can remove him from the arena. That's why you said no matter what way you win, Itadori commented, it all made sense now. A nod was his answer, at this everyone smirked, this was gonna be good. The following day, the soon-to-be clan head found himself walking down the streets of Kuo back to the house, in his hands were four large bags full of different assortments of gluttons that were his peerage members, family had made quick work of the food after their meeting with Lord Bael. They were all looking forward to the game, waiting to get back at him for the way he spoke to them, similarly for him the mon's words echoed in his head all night and had hardly gotten any sleep, not because of what he said mind you, it was more so him going over the best way he could kill that asshole. He had plenty of techniques that could get the job done but he needed something that would really get people talking, something that left no room for debate whether or not he truly deserved the title as the third best, two ideas popped into the forefront of his mind but he was unsure as to which was the better choice, he also didn't want to show off too much, after all he still needed to deal with whoever was in second place as well as Dehauser before Sirzex. If he showed all of his cards in this debut match, then he would be left with no surprises for the big leagues, he also made a mental note to do a little more research into Dehauser, while he was confident in his abilities, someone like Dehauser Belial should NT be taken lightly. He strolled on his path for a little while longer before he came to a sudden halt. He then casually glanced to his left, any normal person would see nothing but trees, but he wasn't normal, he could sense four tainted energy signatures radiating from the within, he had sensed the four tainted energies that had been tailing him ever since he came out of the grocery store, as he extended his senses he found that one of them was familiar, it was the fallen angel woman from the night they killed Issei. The blonde sighed, looks like she didn't learn anything from our last encounter, oh well, might as well deal with this now, he said quietly to himself as he made his way into the trees, after about five minutes of walking he turned around and placed the bags down. You've been following me for a while now, might as well come out, he called out, for a few seconds the only sounds he heard were the soft rustlings of the leaves being moved by the wind until he heard four thumps behind him, his suspicions were confirmed a second later when he turned around and came face to face with four fallen angels, the first one, sure enough, was the one named Rainer from the other night. Alongside her were two other women and a single man, the man wore a white dress shirt under a grey trench coat and had matching black pants and shoes, the eye-catching detail was that he was also wearing both a fedora and an ascot, he stared at him with a calculating look as if appraising him and by the expression on his face, one could tell that he didn't look impressed. Next was a younger woman who could pass off as a child, her attire didn't help her look any older either as she wore a black and white gothic lolita dress with frills, a black bow top sitting on her blonde hair and black shoes with thigh-high white socks, like the man she too was staring at him though she had an arrogant smirk on her face, one that had be sure to wipe off very quickly. Finally, the last of her crew was arguably the most mature looking of them all. She had navy blue hair that partially covered her right eye, she wore a maroon colored suit consisting of a short skirt that stopped well above the knees and a blazer like top with a wide collar, her shirt was also unbuttoned enough that it displayed her cleavage, whether that was to distract her opponents or not, he wasn't sure, however, unlike the other three who seemed to believe they were safe she wore a different expression. The moment his eyes met hers he knew she was aware that he was out of their league, her eyes widened slightly, a far cry from the neutral expression she wore seconds ago, it seemed at least one of them had some sense, maybe there was hope for her yet. Well? He asked, seeing as they hadn't moved, I'd really like to go home so let's hurry this up, I am surprised you're back though, considering I beat you last time, he commented to Rainer who sneered at him in return. I was caught off guard, I wasn't expecting another devil there that night, things are different this time, we outnumber you, four to one she trailed off motioning to her fellow fallen angels. Naruto smirked in confidence as he looked at the fallen getting ready to attack, three out of the four were none the wiser about their impending doom, with the one in the suit being the only one to take a step back. The man with the fedora stepped forward and created a light spear in one hand I must say, you're pretty calm for a man that's about to die. 
Of course I am calm, after all, you're weak, he declared with a smile on his face. That seemed to hit a nerve as the three finally decided to attack, a total of five light spears quickly made their way to him in blinding speeds, Rainer and her male colleague had decided to throw two each while the younger one only threw one. Well, blinding speeds to a normal person or low-level devil, Naruto however kept his hands tucked in his pockets as the spears got closer and closer, making no effort to defend himself, the looks on their faces were priceless as they watched their spears suddenly stop a foot short of him. Is that all you guys got? Naruto asked. Sai I knew you were weak but I thought you had a little more in you, pathetic, predictably, this served to piss them off, unfortunately for them, he was getting tired of this, faster than he could react he appeared in front of the fedora wearing man and in a split second it was over for him. The three women watched in horror as their comrade was pushed back, all four limbs distorting slightly before detaching from his body, manifesting a tiny red orb the size of a marble he flicked it towards the groaning man and eradicated his body. Before they could comprehend what was happening he dashed towards the smallest member of their group and kicked her in the gut, the sheer force of his kick sent her flying backwards, embedding her body into a tree. Middled. Rainer yelled, damn you, she summoned multiple light spears and began throwing them in his direction. What makes you think these spears will have any more impact than the last? Naruto asked as the spears simply stopped before they reached him. Not deterred she flew into the air and proceeded to throw more from different directions, seemingly hoping to find a blind spot, Warner, what the fuck are you doing? Help me kill this bastard, she ordered, unfortunately for Rainer, Warner was still petrified in her spot, not having moved since the battle began. As Rainer tried charging up a bigger spear she found her vision cut off as Naruto teleported next to her and gripped her by the face before plunging back down, the impact was hard enough to leave a small crater in the earth, the last thing the woman saw was a bright red light before she was erased from existence. With the three fallen angels dead the blonde turned his attention back to Warner. you seem to know from the beginning that things would go badly, too bad your friends didn't, he said, glancing at the blonde girl who was slumped over the tree. They're my co-workers, not my friends, still, I wanted to save them, I understood that this was going to end badly but knowing them, it's futile, they wouldn't have listened anyway, she replied, finally finding her voice. He nodded. Yeah it definitely turned out bad for them, the question now is, what do I do with you? He said out loud and rubbed his chin before looking up, ah, but it seems we are not alone anymore looks like we have a guest. Warner frowned in confusion wondering what he was talking about, that confusion quickly turned into shock and then fear when another figure landed between them, the man was relatively tall and had black hair with gold bangs and a black goatee, like the fallen angel standing before him he wore a long maroon jacket being kept closed by two black belts around his waist and grey slacks along with black shoes. Azazel Sama she uttered nervously, Naruto looked over the new arrival and whistled, the governor general of the fallen angels, what brings you here? You avenging your fallen soldiers? He questioned. Azazel glanced at him and smirked, gnaw the small amount of hope Kalawarner had was instantly shattered, if they hadn't gone against my orders perhaps it would have been a different story. Oh. Well I was in the area when I sensed my wayward soldiers energy fluctuating, I got curious who they were fighting against as I specifically said they were only to study their target, to my surprise I find none other than Naruto Uzumaki, he answered with a smile on his face as if he was pleased. The blonde was slightly surprised that the man knew him, I am honored that a big shot like you knows of me, but I don't think I made myself that big a deal for the faction leaders to even know of me, yet, so how? He was more curious than anything, he was sure neither the Satans nor the Bael clan had gotten his name out. I have my ways, he said proudly, I even heard about your upcoming raiding game against Badiz Abaddon, he revealed. Damn, that was just yesterday and the man knew about it already, color him impressed, truth be told, I am looking forward to it, ought to be interesting want it. The man continued as he smirked at the blonde. You won't be disappointed I am sure, Naruto commented before he turned his attention back to the blue haired woman, I suppose you would want to deal with her yourself, considering she's part of your faction and all. The woman turned to her leader with hopeful eyes, a long shot from the proud look she was used to wearing, hum, no, I'll leave it to you, after all, they did attack you and followed Kokebiel's orders instead of mine, consider this as a token of my goodwill. Naruto nodded since you didn't attack me like your colleagues did I'll give you a choice, you can work for me and my family or you can join your friends, as he gave her the ultimatum he brought his hand up and let a black ball of energy materialize on his palm, Kalawarner turned to Azazel once more, realizing she wouldn't be saved she made her choice. She hung her head down and her shoulders shrugged, it'll work for you, just don't kill me. Well, I suppose our business here is done, said Naruto as picked up his grocery bags, he then looked at Azazel and asked. But I suppose that token of goodwill doesn't come out for free, does it? Azazel laughed and said, ha 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 ha, 
Perceptive one, aren't you? That's true. Naruto narrowed his eyes and asked, Well then, shoot, I don't like to owe anything to anybody, I'll do it as long as it's not dirty. Trust me, it's not, I just want to ask a few questions, that's all. We can even go fishing during this talk, said Azazel adding an incentive to his offer. Naruto thought for a moment before coming to a decision, well, it wouldn't hurt to be on good terms with the leader of the fallen, might even come handy someday, he thought. All right, let me just drop this off at my place and run an errand really quick and well go fishing, the lake just south of here, 30 minutes? The man nodded and extended all 12 of his wings before taking flight once more, turning to the lone fallen angel he spoke, come on let's go, we need to drop the food off. Half hour later, and that's how we got to where we are now. Naruto had just relayed what had transpired the previous day and given him some background on the situation, he didn't really care if the man knew or not as there was no info that could be used against him in any way. Azazel nodded as he took a sip of his drink that had brought along with him, he, Kalawarner, who'd been brought along by Naruto for reasons unknown to her, and the blonde himself were sitting in a relatively large boat in the center of the lake going over what Azazel wanted to know, and choosing a champion who's in the top five guarantees him victory, at least that's what he's banking on, he said, studying the younger man's face, he didn't look the slightest bit worried. Naruto reeled the line back revealing a rather small fish on the hook and nodded after tossing it back into the water, that's right but I am confident I can beat him, the goal is to thoroughly humiliate him while showing off as little as possible and still make it clear I deserve that spot. Hum, I see, your confidence suggests that you either have a solid plan or an impeccable power, a sacred gear, perhaps? He asked, the last bit sounding hopeful something that didn't go unnoticed by the young devil. The blonde chuckled sorry to burst your bubble but I don't have a sacred gear. Then what is it? He asked curiously, Naruto smirked and began reeling when he felt a pull on the line. Azazel, seeing this whined almost childishly, come on man give me something to work with. This only made Naruto laugh a little harder as he found the man's antics amusing, he then looked at Azazel and ordered, scoop some water and throw it at me. Azazel was curious at the sudden order and glanced at his former subordinate looking for some clue, however, to his disappointment, Kalawarner was equally curious to see what the blonde devil had in mind, Azazel did not think any longer, and did as he was told, he scooped a handful of water and threw it at the blonde, the two fallen angels watched in both fascination, surprise, and curiosity when the water hit a barrier of sorts. Kalawarner's face lit up in realization as she immediately knew this was what was causing the light spears that her now dead colleagues were throwing to stop right before him. Azazel meanwhile tried it again muttering how peculiar while he did so. The older man's brain must have been working overtime to find out what was going on, Naruto thought had tried the water again but instead the man tried reaching out to him with his hand only to be stopped inches away from him, Azazel's face broke into a smile as his excitement began to increase as well as the pressure he was applying to try and reach him. A high level magical barrier perhaps? He heard him mutter to himself, the blonde glanced behind him to see Kalawarner also reaching out to him but like her former boss, she too was stuck in place, after about five minutes of the two trying different methods to touch him Azazel finally asked, how does this work? I've never come across something like this, I suspected it was a magical barrier of some kind, but powering a barrier to this degree would consume your reserves at a rapid rate. Deciding to throw the man a bone he answered, I control infinity. Unknown to him the fallen angel leader's mind flashed with the image of a small girl in gothic clothing the moment he uttered the words, go on he motioned with his hand as he leaned forward. I answered your question already, his amusement with the man only grew when he saw him pout for a second before he snapped his finger. Okay how about this, tell me how it works and I'll tell you how Badiz Abaddon's ability works, not a bad deal right? I suppose I could do that, however, just to make sure you keep your word you go first, normally Azazel would have pointed out the fact that he needed to do his part first before he spoke but decided to make an exception, he really wanted to know what this infinity entailed. Nodding in agreement he began Badiz Abaddon is incredibly proficient in his clan's innate ability known as Hole, as the name suggests he can create holes or portals rather, that have multiple uses, it's versatile enough that he can absorb attacks and direct them back to whoever he wants, what's more he can absorb the attacks and then create a portal anywhere he wants before redirecting the attacks, he explained. Only magical attacks? He asked, still not very worried about it. No, physical attacks too, he can punch through a portal and have his fist appear anywhere else to land a hit, teleportation can also be done by creating two portals and simply jumping from one to another, apart from that he's got a lot of stamina and incredible physical power, there's a reason the top five in the rating games are said to be immovable from their positions. Would Abaddon be a threat to you? Naruto asked, genuinely curious. It would be draining of course, but I would still come out on top. Naruto nodded in acceptance, thank you for the information, 
I was already sure I'd win but now there's absolutely no doubt in my mind. Both Azazel and Calawarner blinked, he still wasn't the least bit concerned. Did he realize he wasn't fighting an up-and-coming young devil but a top-rank ultimate class? So you're not even a little worried? Calawarner was the one to ask this time. Nope, if anything he should be relatively easy to deal with, he replied which only served to make Azazel want to know more. Your infinity must be really something if you are that confident, but we digress, I believe it's your turn now. Naruto reeled in another fish before tossing it back, infinity is a technique unique to myself, at least I believe it is since I've never seen anyone else with it, what I do is bring the concept of infinity to reality to distort space at will, the barrier from before is a manifestation of this concept, think about this, how many times do you have to divide a number before it reaches zero? Azazel didn't have to consider the question for too long, it didn't matter how many times you did it, as it would just continue to inch closer but would never actually reach, as soon as the thought passed through his mind, his eyes widened and the blonde smiled, knowing had figured it out. I see you understand, when you attack me you're not exactly stopped, but the closer you get the slower you go until it looks like you're no longer moving. So no matter how hard someone tries to attack it will never actually reach you which gives the illusion that you've created a barrier, Calawarner summarized. Exactly, for the first time in a while the man was shocked, had come across many powerful abilities both natural and granted through sacred gears in his time but this was perhaps one of the most powerful had come across, the young man was quite literally untouchable, plus he was sure that there was more to it than just that, had mentioned distorting space and tried questioning him about it. Naruto however told him he'd just have to watch the rating game to find out more, the three decided to depart not too long after that, seeing as Azazel had some other business to attend to, turning to Calawarner he grabbed onto her shoulder and teleported them to land, come on, let's go get you some clothes. Head decided that while at the house, Shed work as a maid and looked the part and while in public Shed stay dressed in the suit as she looked damn good in it. The next couple of days were spent idly, everyone just enjoying themselves doing their own thing, though on one of the days, his queen did suggest he do a little training in preparation for the raiding game, he was confident he didn't need to train in order to win, but he would do so, if it meant keeping her from annoying him until he did it. The day of the raiding game was finally upon them and the entire peerage was gathered in the living room waiting for their king to speak, I was contacted by the old bastard yesterday, he said referring to Lord Bale, we have to be in the arena in 15 minutes. Can't wait, hopefully he's got some people that can put up a fight, it's been a while since I've had my blood pumping in battle, Basby commented with a giant grin on his face, a sentiment that was shared by both Grimjow and Karasuba. Regardless of who you fight, I want you guys to dominate the battlefield. Don't show everything in your arsenal but make it clear that we're stronger, a lot of big names will be watching," Naruto added. Mahawk, who was sitting down on the couch sipping on some wine spoke next it's a given that the Satans will be watching, but who else? The governor of the fallen angels for one, he seemed really interested in this battle from the way he talked to me before and I bet that the higher ups in heaven will be watching as well. The minutes passed by quickly as they spoke among each other until finally it was time to go, the blonde summoned a magical circle beneath them and in a split second they were gone. When they reappeared at the entrance of the arena they weren't surprised to see a horde of people surrounding the building, it was actually expected, the third rank competing was something people wouldn't want to miss. I am willing to bet a large majority, if not everyone present, bet their money on Badiz Bisky said as they made their way inside the building. Megaman who was currently sitting atop one of Gut's shoulders laughed in amusement, the small portion who decides to bet on us are gonna be rich by the end of the day. The group stopped walking a minute later when another magic circle appeared in the middle of the hallway, to their surprise Sears X Lucifer appeared before them and greeted them, Mr Uzumaki I am glad you and your peerage made it with no trouble. You can just call me Naruto, everything was smooth, which begs the question as to why you're here, shouldn't you be with the other Satans? He asked. I am just making sure no one tried to sabotage anything before the game began, Lord Bale has a lot to lose and I wouldn't put it past him to attempt something, so if you wouldn't mind, please follow me, it seemed they had a private escort, it was unnecessary but welcomed nonetheless, they followed him to a room where they were told to wait until they made the announcement. Once they call your team, the door will open and you'll step onto the field, once both teams are ready, Ajuka will teleport you to the main stage within the dimensional gap and artificially create the terrain, any questions? Sears X asked. The team glanced at each other but no one spoke up, very well good luck and do put on a good show. Naruto nodded in thanks and crossed his arms as the door was closed, it was quiet in the room for a minute before they heard the voice of Grafia resonate through the arena, good evening everyone, my name is Grafia Lucifuge and I'll be the broadcaster for today's event between the third ranked Bedez Abaddon, and Naruto Uzumaki. Before we begin Lord Bael, 
who's sponsoring the event would like to say a few words, the woman announced. Thank you. I am sure everyone is anxious and excited to see one of the top five ranked devils in action but please give me a moment of your time. I simply wished to inform everyone what the stakes of the game this evening will be. Naruto was sure that those outside and those watching the broadcast had given him their full attention. It was clear that those in high places knew what was going on but regular everyday devils probably thought it was simply a regular match. Yes you heard correctly. This is a high stakes matchup. Should Naruto Uzumaki lose, he and his peerage will be executed. However, should he win, Lord Abaddon will be stripped of his rank and will be replaced by Uzumaki. With that said it'll allow Grafia to continue. Mahawk scoffed he must be real confident to let everyone know about the stakes, now everyone will believe we're on death row. All the more reason to kill his champion, Grimjow replied angrily, they heard Grafia call Team Abaddon out and then followed suit when she called them, the door opened and the two peerages made their way to the center of the arena, Naruto and Bedez stood opposite each other, one with a blank face, the other with a sneer as he looked down. Do try not to die too fast, if I have to waste my time with you, the least I can do is give my fellow high-class devils a good show, Bedez spat, clearly upset that he had to fight against them. Baz B smirked and spat near the mon's feet trust me they are gonna get a show they'll never forget, he commented before flipping the man off. Just as he expected the mon's sneer turned into a look of pure hatred, Bedez took a step forward, ready to try and put him in his place but stopped as the arena floor began to glow, everyone soon found themselves surrounded by a colorful void that seemed to go on forever. The void soon changed from the vast nothingness into a large remote mountain village that had all types of trees and vegetation around, Naruto glanced around noticing Bedez and his group were gone, closing his eyes and extending his senses he felt large sources of energy on what was most likely the border of their arena, they are on the other side. He was about to give his orders when the angelic voice of Grafia was heard once more, both teams have been sent to their respective sides of the field, the raiding game has commenced. Scatter. In the blink of an eye he was by himself, he could feel that the opposing players were also making their way over with their leader staying in place as well, it didn't take long before the first major explosion could be heard within the distance, letting a small smile grace his face he looked up to the artificial sky, I wonder. His body flickered before disappearing from its spot and he reappeared a few thousand feet in the air, at this altitude he had a clear view of the entire field and could see every battle going on at the moment, looking towards the end of the field he could see the opposing king sitting down on a makeshift seat staring up at him but making no effort to attack. Seeing as he wasn't moving, Naruto turned his attention back down his peerage members who were locked in battle, his eyes were drawn to Basby who was currently fighting against what seemed like a Nekomata, she had white hair with small cat ears protruding from her head, she wore a blue jacket with yellow buttons and orange shorts with pin stripes, matching socks and blue shoes. Baz B vs Nekomata Baz B stepped aside just as a bluish blur sped past him before dashing a few feet back to avoid a stomp where he was just standing. Oi, cat girl, what's your name? He asked. The Nekomata tilted her head, almost as if confused that he would be talking during their battle. Neferpito, why? I just like to know the name of the person I am about to beat into the ground, he said, a mad smile on his face, before the woman could react he appeared behind her, gripped the back of her head with his left hand and slammed her into the ground, not giving her a chance to get herself back together his foot connected with her ribs sending her away into the mountain face. Raising his right hand he made a makeshift gun with his hands using his index finger and thumb as she hit, the tip of his finger burst into a small flame that quickly turned into a straight beam as it was fired. He had to give credit where it was due, as she was well enough to move aside in time for the beam to pierce through the stone. Hum? Not bad. He complimented as she wiped some blood from her mouth. He watched in fascination as her facial expression changed into a crazed look as she crouched down. He could see the veins in her thighs begin to bulge as she prepared to attack. In the time it took him to blink she made her move. She pushed off the ground with enough force to destroy where Shed previously stood. The problem with speed like that is that it's damn near impossible to stop. He remarked as a light aura surrounded his body, as soon as she was close enough the aura burst into flames that quickly engulfed the surrounding area, the pressure built up due to the fire propelled her upwards into the sky. Baz B swiped his right hand into the air, his hand having made another gun shape, this time with two fingers extended rather than one, burner finger two, two trails of fire that pierced the woman's midsection as she flew over him, he tilted his face away so as to not get blood in his eyes and only looked back once he heard a thud behind him. Turning around he saw her gripping her stomach, trying in vain, to stop the bleeding, her body was burned in multiple places and bleeding profusely, I am surprised you haven't been removed from the game yet, he commented as he took in her battered form. She gasped for breath and stood up on very shaky legs, 
her body began to glow with an ominous reddish black or I am not done yet, I cannot fail Lord Abaddon, she whispered. The Mohawk sporting man couldn't help but respect the woman a little, she clearly wasn't going down until she was forced, however, he started to sense a feeling of danger from the woman, she was going all out apparently, letting her use a trump card might force him to use more than necessary, he had to end this now. Dashing forward he kicked her in the chin faster than she could react, before her body went airborne he grabbed her by the leg and slammed her back into the ground, he gripped her head and tossed her into the side of the mountain once more and fired off a burner finger one. The fire once again only pierced stone as her body was engulfed in light and disappeared before the shot could connect, Badiz Abaddon's rook has been retired Grafia called out, nodding in satisfaction the blonde turned his attention to another battle going on just west of the previous one. Bisky if anyone was to look at the two, they would clearly see a horrible match, a petite blonde versus a giant of a man covered in muscle, unsurprisingly he claimed his name was muscular, it was a no-brainer why this fight would end poorly, but the confident look in Bisky's eyes would make some think otherwise. It happened in an instant, one minute she's standing in place, the next, she was gone, that's when her opponent felt it, a stinging pain in his left cheek, and then his ribs, he felt strike after strike and couldn't do anything to block it, the little blonde was merely a blur in the eyes of the devils. Muscular's prosthetic eyes zipped all around the area, locked onto his target, a sinister smirk etched itself across his face, every little strike just made it wider and wider, his arm started to shake, it slithered and bulged until it was at the desired level. Bisky kept her onslaught of hit and run, aiming specifically for his joints, hoping to disable the psycho before. Wham! An agonizing pain suddenly appeared in the young girl's stomach, the cause? Muscular's giant fist, his arm had changed, now three times the size, fully covered with raw muscle, stopping at his wrist, every strike having more power and more ferocity, for a man of his stature it was a wonder how he could move that fast. Bisky eyes bulged, mouth agape in pain, she was able to see the second punch coming but was unable to stop it. A snap echoed across the battlefield, silence reigned as almost all the observers froze from the horrendous sight that followed, the sight of the young girl getting her neck snapped was still shocking, even if she was a willing participant, the force of the blow sent her skidding across the ground until the friction forced her to stop. She laid there in a heap, unmoving, muscular, satisfied with himself started to walk away, he hadn't even noticed that Grafia had never called out whether she had been retired or not, however, that was soon to be resolved, as the unmoving heap of flesh started to move. He 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 he, giggled the little girl frightening the hearts of the devils watching the broadcast. Muscular stopped dead in his tracks, body tensing, his remaining eye widened dramatically, swiftly turning around he spotted Bisky rising to her hands and knees, hunched over as she started to shake. So you survived that huh? Not bad, one of my normal punches can usually bury someone ten feet under and you just took something that had a little more oomph, not bad at all. I always let people get a hit in, as a tribute, Bisky's body started to tremble, the once small girl started to grow and grow and grow, until she eclipsed Muscular's own height. Her body which was once petite, bulged with outstanding muscle, Muscular blinked and in that minuscule second was sent flying by the strongest blow he's ever felt in his entire life. Because I can't restrain myself when I turn back to this form, no longer was her voice soft and sweet, it was raw and deep, the blonde man shook his head to get rid of the dots that plagued his vision his remaining eye was wide and his heart felt like it dropped into his stomach. W what the hell? In a fraction of a second he was struck in the jaw just like earlier, this time it didn't sting, it hurt. He felt as if his head was nearly knocked off his shoulders, sent flying across the field, he couldn't move, he felt paralyzed for that brief moment, squinting from the pain, he slowly opened his eye, only to widen it in horror, she was standing there, waiting for him, her face was blank but her eyes, her eyes. Another blow, then another and another, each blow felt like it was tearing him apart, she let him go, watching apathetically as he skidded across the ground, just like she did moments ago, muscular shakily stood up, he looked crazed, eye bloodshot, drooling like a feral dog. You little bitch. His body started to bulge, more muscle started to cover his form until he looked like the monster that he was, d. Bisky straightened her shoulders, put one foot back and cocked her right arm. The battle was over before it began, two fists met, battling for dominance, the amount of energy released enough to damage the surrounding terrain, Bisky could see Muscular's eyes widen as the muscle around his arm began to tear before it exploded, no longer able to withstand the power of the once small girl. Her arm continued moving forward until it collided with his face, she could feel some of the bones of his skull crack under the pressure, before he could be sent soaring through the air his body glowed white and disappeared. Bidi's Abaddon's pawn has been retired, Grafia announced. Nice work, he complimented as he watched her revert back to her childish form. She clapped her hands and patted her dress before dashing in the direction of someone else, 
he was forced to tilt his head to avoid a blast of fire that had been shot from below, following the trail he saw who was responsible and watched, eager to see how it would go. Mara Leona looked annoyed, not necessarily for following her master's orders, but with who she had to fight, her opponent was an androgynous looking person with long black hair that was spiked downward and came out of a headband, they wore a sort of crop top as well as a skirt but sounded masculine, not only that it had a weird name, Envy, at least that's what their teammate called it before departing. So it's you and me huh? If there's one thing she despises in this world, it's weak opponents, TCH, you have a lot of nerve trying to fight me, can't you see I am out of your league? However, her opponent didn't respond to her taunts, Mero Leona smirked and looked downright frightening maybe you will learn once I've burnt you to a crisp. Channeling her magic, an intense heat covered her fist. Bring I Envy was interrupted by the fiery fist that was trying to combust their head, she could smell her flesh cooking. Next was a strike to her ribs. Envy screamed in agony as it felt like they were being cooked from the inside out. Mara Leona finished her attack with a devastating uppercut, leaving her opponent to lay flat on her back sizzling. TCH, another damn disappointment she started to walk away, disappointment still clear but then she stopped. Envy's name wasn't called, she slowly turned, brow raised in confusion as she studied their prone form. Crack. The ground broke beneath her and a massive green hand swiped at the noblewoman, she was faster, easily dodging each and every attack. You bitch. That hurt. Envy's body seemed to break apart then put itself back together again, they rose seemingly like a puppet, her face had a demented look as her skin started to look sickly, her face had a demented look as her skin started to turn from a sickly pale to an unearthly dark green. I would say you looked better before but honestly this is an improvement. Ill fucking rip you apart. Mero Leona looked disgusted as her opponent's body started to mutate and morph, she kept growing until she was roughly 20 meters tall, her true form was hideous, just looking at it made the noblewoman nauseous. You know what? Go back, the sight of you disgusts me. Ill rip you apart. Then ill find your pathetic king and kill him slowly. Alright. Now you've pissed me off the noblewoman was completely surrounded by her flames, slowly she lifted off the ground until she was high for everyone to see, her flames started to circle around her and grow. To all the onlookers watching the broadcast it was like staring at the sun. Envy growled firing off some alchemist magic to try and disrupt whatever her enemy was doing but no matter how many blasts she fired or how strong they were, it had no effect. Die you trash. Just like that, the ball of fire crashed into envy, lighting her and everything around her in a blaze, the monstrosity of a devil screeched in agony. No. The smoke cleared, revealing a scorched earth with a charred body lying dead center, envy was now nothing but a burnt crisp, didn't move, couldn't move, even if they wanted to. The only sign they were alive was the slight moving of their lips, like her fellow peerage members her body was enveloped in light before disappearing. Bidiz Abaddon's pawn has been retired Mero Leona started to walk away, wondering what was happening with the rest of her peerage members. Naruto couldn't help but smirk as he watched her walk away, he wanted to watch another battle but turned his attention back to their leader who was now standing up, it seemed he knew that at the rate things were going he'd be peerageless in no time, deciding it was time, he reappeared a few feet away from the nobleman and met his stare. That mountain face behind you, Naruto called out pointing behind Badiz, who didn't turn, that's where it's going to end for you. Badiz remained silent, which was surprising considering how much he loved the sound of his own voice, instead he raised his hand holding his palm out to the blonde and a magical circle formed, Naruto raised an eyebrow as a green orb was formed which began growing in size before it was shot in his direction. The spectators watched in shock as the blonde didn't move an inch from his place, deciding to take the full brunt of the attack head on. So much for your threat of ending me, Badiz spat as he stared into the dark cloud generated by the attack, his victory was short lived however, when the smoke began to clear and his opponent was still standing in the same spot, with not even a scratch on him. Good attack, but not good enough, how about you do yourself a favor? Forfeit and save yourself some of that useless pride, otherwise, you wouldn't be left with even that when this match is over, Naruto offered as he raised a finger up to eye level, four beams of red light spiraled onto the tip of his finger creating a small marble sized ball. So? He asked. Similarly to him Badiz stood in place, not answering the question or putting up any form of defense, Naruto had to stop himself from smirking at the man, his plan was easy enough to figure out, had wait until he fired the attack and open up a hole and direct it back to him, if Azazel hadn't told him about it maybe he'd be caught off guard slightly, unfortunately he was prepared and he had a counter ready just for this occasion. Red the orb changed to white and began to glow brighter and brighter before detonating, the moment the attack went off he distorted space around Badiz, knowing a portal was coming, dashing forward he saw the man had actually been forced to dodge as part of his arm was slightly charred. 
Naruto distorted the space around him to warp himself next to the man and landed a punch on the right side of his face, while he may not be the most powerful in terms of brute strength, he did pack a punch, but Deez was knocked back, a bruise formed on his face from the force of the punch. Damn you the man seethed as he spit some blood on the ground, he dashed back and revealed his wings before taking to the skies, the man raised his arms and created hundreds of small black orbs before raining them down on the field below, but Deez didn't get a chance to see if it worked as his vision went black due to Naruto's hand gripping it. The moment the field was littered with attacks Naruto had teleported next to the man and began his counter, willing space to propel him, he plummeted down taking the man with him, upon impact he didn't let go however and continued moving forward, creating a small trench using Badez's body. He jumped off right on time to avoid a red blast, shot from the mon's hand. It'll give you one last chance, just from that brief exchange I know you're aware, I am faster than you and can cancel out your whole ability, without those you're nothing, Naruto taunted, to once again prove his point he ran forward dodging all the projectiles the man tried stopping him with. His punch was blocked but while they were busy exchanging moves, Badiz never saw that the space around his left leg began to distort ever so slightly, Naruto made sure to focus the his attacks around the face area to block the mon's field of vision for a second and sliced, as expected Badez's eyes widened as his balance was thrown off. The man looked down at his leg which had been amputated right at the knee, his lack of focus resulted in Naruto grabbing him by the hand and pulling him forward before delivering a punch to his solar plexus, the punch was hard enough that it drew blood out of the mouth of his opponent. However, the assault didn't end there, having locked his hand in place. Naruto brought him closer and repeatedly punched the man, after 12 or so consecutive punches he brought his palm up to the mon's chest and fired red at point blank range, making sure to send him back in the direction where the battle started, teleporting himself to him. Naruto smiled in satisfaction at the state the once arrogant man was in, he was in a sitting position against the mountain face, the stump that was his leg continuously bleeding. Ah! Badiz yelled as Naruto got close and tried another magical attack, this time it was a dark red orb that had a black outer glow, similarly to all the other attacks up until this point. The attack was useless as it seemingly stopped right before reaching him, it changed color to black briefly before exploding, the result was a massive mushroom cloud that could be seen from all areas of the field. For a last resort, that wasn't half bad, Naruto commented as he walked out of the smoke unharmed, but now it's time to make good on my word, luckily the system hasn't removed you from the game yet, that mountain face behind you is the border of the arena, which means no matter how hard it's hit it won't break. What happened next was something every supernatural creature watching would never forget, Naruto appeared in front of the downed man and seemingly pushed the air in front of him, and just like that, Badiz Abaddon, one of the men said to be immovable from his position, was reduced to a splatter of blood and mutilated body parts on the wall. Badiz Abaddon has been eliminated, winner Naruto Uzumaki, even Greyfire's voice couldn't hide the shock she felt, the arena faded back into the colorless void and all participants were teleported back into the arena within the underworld, immediately devils raced inside to look over the remains of the nobleman. Naruto turned around to see Lord Bael staring at him in shock, Naruto flashed him a peace sign before making his way towards Sirzex who had just entered the building, needless to say the next couple of days in the underworld were going to be hectic. The underworld was in shock, even after a couple of days passed since the raiding game between Badiz Abaddon and the newcomer Naruto Uzumaki, talk of their match was prevalent, while there was some talk of the matches between their peerage members, what most people were talking about was the conclusion to the match, Badiz Abaddon, the man who'd been ranked number 3 for years, had been killed. It was shocking enough that had died but it was the way he died that had people talking, the man had been turned into nothing more than paste on the walls in front of the entirety of the devil society. The more prejudiced devils, mostly that of the older generation, had their world literally flipped in the span of a day, one of the pureblood devils of their society, a very powerful one at that, had been killed by someone who was still just a kid in their eyes, while most wouldn't miss him per se, they were still in disarray at what his loss meant for them as a whole. The younger devils were shocked as well, though for completely different reasons, someone in their generation suddenly appeared and knocked off one of the men who was said to be immovable from his spot, understandably, that set off a wave of hope for those of the lower houses and status, this proved that the rhetoric the older devils spewed about pure bloods being superior was bullshit. Though the entirety of the underworld was discussing the match, there were also two other devils that were frequently brought up in the conversation. Dehauser Belial and Roygon Belfagor, the current first and second rank in the rating games, it was a widely accepted fact that those in the top wouldn't move from their spots, so for one to be so easily usurped raised questions, how strong was Uzumaki exactly? If he was able to toy with an ultimate class devil while holding back most of his abilities, what else could he do? When would he challenge them for the second and first place spots? All of these were questions one would hear while traveling through any part of the underworld. 
While most people were caught up in the excitement however, one devil had wanted nothing more than for everyone to forget about the whole thing, the man known simply as Lord Bile to most, had been on the receiving end of silent scrutiny, no one dared say anything out loud to the head of the Bile clan but he could see it. Lord Bile knew the other lords blamed him for the death of one of the purebloods of their society, of all the things he expected from that raiding game, Badi's dying was not one of them, it might seem bad now but there was still a way to salvage this. He looked at the figure sitting across from him, the woman looked to be in her early twenties with bright pink hair along with two horns protruding from her head, she had very large breasts, a slim waist, and wore a form-fitting high-cut dress with high slits showing off a pair of wonderful legs, she's the current second rank of the raiding games, Roygun Belfagor. I must say, it was a surprise to hear that you wish to speak to me, I think I have an idea as to why I am here but please, do tell me, she spoke. Lord Bile looked at her with a stoic face, not letting anything show, first let me thank you for taking the time to meet with me, I know that you must be very busy lately, as to why you're here I was hoping you would be willing to do a small favor for me. Roygon smirked and crossed one leg over the other, what small favor would that be? She asked in a knowing tone. I'd like to sponsor, was as far as he got before the woman in front of him put a hand up, the man had to hold back the urge to scowl at the display, no one in their right mind ever told him when to stop talking, not even the satans, he would overlook this though, he needed her to comply with him, Dehauser would have been preferred but the man wouldn't take his request to meet, perhaps he had a clue about the incident with Claria? Let me stop you right there Lord Bael, I am sure I can finish what you wanted to say, I'd like to sponsor a game between you and Naruto Uzumaki is that right? she asked. The man didn't provide a response, I know you're an intelligent man, which is why I am wondering why you decided to have Badiz Abaddon be your champion, did you know I had to talk him out of attacking your clan a few years ago? He did know about that. I am aware, but he owed me a few favors for pulling some strings in the past and had no choice. She nodded in understanding, it was just like the man to have powerful people under his thumb. I see, and because of that he's dead, the man was turned into a smear on the wall with millions of people watching it happen in real time, that's a fate I don't want to share, she said plainly, while she was a powerful devil, it didn't mean she was willing to risk her life against an opponent she knew next to nothing about. Lord Bile laced his fingers together in front of his face and rested his elbows on his desk, it is unfortunate what happened to Badiz, but it is a known fact that you were more powerful than he was, you've taken on anyone who challenged you in the past with no hesitation, so why now? Surely you don't believe Uzumaki can beat you, not with your crack ability, he said, trying to stroke her ego. Please don't insult my intelligence Lord Bile. everyone I've battled against, I've had time to study and prepare for, there's no way to prepare against an opponent who has no information about himself to study, Roygun let a pleased smile appear on her face before she continued, besides, what little information there is about him is useless, after all, you never spoke about Naruto Bile at all in the past few years. For the first time since their meeting started, Lord Bile let an emotion break through his facade, surprise followed by suspicion, and finally anger. How do you know about that boy? He asked, flaring his power slightly a display that did nothing to the beauty sitting before him. I have my sources, she answered happily, unfortunately Lord Bael, I have to decline your proposal, you can still try your luck with Dehauser Belial, he might be more willing than I am, after all, he is the reigning champion, Roygun glanced at the clock and patted her dress down, now if you'll excuse me, I have a meeting to attend to. The Belfagor clan insignia appeared below her and she was gone, now alone in his office Lord Bael finally let the scowl had been holding back mar his face. Uzumaki he seethed, don't think this is over, he took a deep breath to control himself and made his way out of his office, he needed to think. xxxxxxxxxxxxx while Lord Bile was left to contemplate his next move, Naruto was making his way towards a large lavish room inside the large arena where the raiding games took place, after his victory over Badiz, Sirzex had told him he would need to attend a meeting between the top five since had disrupted future matches. The blonde couldn't help but smirk, he was sure old man Bile was punching the air in frustration that his plan didn't go as he expected, not only did the thought of his former head of house being pissed make him feel good, but he was also excited for the celebration he was going to have with his peerage. They weren't always gathered in the same place, most of the time others were off doing jobs or training, they were going to enjoy themselves while they had the chance, he shook his head of those thoughts when he reached the door he was instructed to find, not knowing whether he should knock or not, he shrugged and let himself in. The inside of the room was as lavish as the rest of the building, a large elongated table sat in the middle of the room, since they were in one of the upper floors, the windows had a rather nice view of the streets down below, Naruto's eyes quickly locked on to the four devils who were seated already. At one end of the table sat a white-haired man wearing a high-collar red cloak that was open at the front, 
revealing the Mont's muscular chest as well as exposing a necklace with a long red jewel at the end. Dehauser he thought to himself, the man stared back at him with a blank face, but not one of dismissal, it was almost as if he was sizing him up, the same way Naruto was doing to him, even with his seemingly nonchalant expression Naruto could tell the man was on a completely different level than Badiz was. His eyes looked to the Mont's left where a young-looking woman with pink hair that was braided and came down the side and horns on her head sat, he couldn't help but notice she was very pretty but he didn't let that distract him too long, like Dehauser he could sense that she was powerful, more so than Badiz but not on the white-haired Mont's level. He was beginning to see why they'd stayed in their positions for so long if the power gaps between them were this large, he glanced at the empty seat beside her and then looked across the table where two other devils sat, unlike the previous two, they were looking at him with contempt clear in their eyes. Naruto flashed a peace sign at them and made his way over to the vacant seat next to the woman, she must be the second rank, Roygen Belfagor. The woman turned to him the moment he sat down and smiled kindly at him, welcome, Beelzebub Sama should be here momentarily she said before leaning closer to him, her face a few inches away from his, hum, you're cuter up close, very nice, she purred. Naruto raised an eyebrow, this was not what he was expecting from one of his targets. Oi Uzumaki, yelled one of the devils sitting across from him, Naruto turned to them with an unimpressed look on his face. What is it? Naruto asked, irritated, the one who spoke didn't get a chance to continue to spout off as the door opened once again revealing a tall green-haired man with a gray shirt under a green jacket with yellow and black accents, along with a purple ascot around his neck, the two devils immediately sat straighter and tried to look as nonchalant as possible. It was a pathetic display in his opinion, he glanced over at the first and second ranked competitors and saw that they were as relaxed as could be. Thank you all for being here on time, Beelzebub began taking a seat at the opposite end of the table, it's strange seeing you all here since we haven't gathered in so many years, but it's also exciting in a sense, he said taking a look towards the new arrival. Uzumaki, allow me to welcome you to the top 5 of the rating games, I am sure you know already but let me introduce you, he said, motioning his hand forward, first rank, the Emperor Dehauser Belial, second rank, Roygun Belfagor, fourth rank, Adamas Apollyon, and finally fifth rank Virgil Barbados. Naruto waved at Dehauser and Roygun cheerfully, but made sure to mockingly wave at the last two. Yo, nice to meet you guys, Naruto said, briefly standing up. Beelzebub nodded at him and spoke again the reason we're having this meeting is to discuss how your usurpation of the former third rank affects the matches that had been previously scheduled, he placed a small device on the table which lit up, displaying a screen in the air for them to see. The screen showed their names, as well as dates next to another team name. Excuse me Beelzebub Sama, Adamas interjected, if he's only disrupted the matches that Bedez was supposed to participate in, why exactly are we here? He asked, shooting a dirty look towards the blonde. That's because now that a new devil has taken his place, schedules have changed, the matches were planned with both parties' schedules in mind, now that he's here some matches might need to be rescheduled, which means some of yours might as well, he explained calmly. The next hour or so was spent between the six of them rescheduling future matches, for the most part he was put up against clans such as the Amos, Person, Glacia Labalas, Bareth, and Furnius, all minor competitors in his eyes, while they may be powerful against some low or middle class devils, to him they wouldn't be much trouble he did notice however that none of them were matched up against each other. He and Adama's Apollyon were the only ones facing members of the top 10, Apollyon would be facing the 7th ranked Rudiger Rosenkreutz while Naruto would be battling against Ruval Fenix who was ranked 8th, while he didn't mind facing someone ranked in the top 10, Ruval wasn't who he was after. Naruto glanced at everyone else and saw that, for the most part, they seemed to be content with the matches and their time slots. Well, that's about it, Beelzebub announced happily, does anyone have any changes they'd like to make before they're official? He asked. The blonde could tell that the two devils beneath him wanted to say something but seemed to be losing their nerve now that one of the satans was in the room, pathetic really. If you don't mind I have some things I'd like to say, Naruto commented as he stood up, the green-haired satan sat down in his seat and turned off the device before nodding at him to go ahead, the blonde smiled mischievously and stood up before proceeding to walk around the room slowly for dramatic effect. I just want to start by saying that even though I am not facing you guys, know that I am coming for you, he said looking at the players on the table. Don't go getting a big head, Uzumaki, Virgil shot back angrily Badiz got what was coming to him for being arrogant but don't think it'll be the same for us. Naruto stared at him completely unimpressed with the man, oh I am sorry I should have clarified, I wasn't talking to you guys, he said pointing at both Virgil and Adamas before moving his finger over to the other two devils, I was talking to them. 
Roygon stared back at him with her head resting on a fist and one leg sensually crossed over the other, she had a challenging smile on her face when she heard his declaration. Dehauser meanwhile hadn't changed facial expression throughout the entire meeting, his answers were straight and to the point anytime he was asked anything and hardly said a word otherwise. Not even Beelzebub could stop himself from slightly smirking at the exchange, now he could see why Sirzex found the boy interesting, no devil in their right mind would casually dismiss devils of their caliber, so to see it happening was an interesting experience. Make no mistake about it, I have every intention to challenge you for your ranks in the near future, also, Beelzebub, Naruto called out. The green-haired Satan raised an eyebrow at the young devil. Everyone here has been in their position for a long time right? Which means they would most likely have very old evil piece sets correct? Beelzebub's eyes widened, as did everyone else's at the question. That's correct, everyone here was given sets that are no longer in use by devils in the underworld, Naruto nodded in satisfaction and created a small magical circle in his palm. I see, he turned back to the devils just to give you guys something to think about, I made it here without using this, he said, placing a small red king piece on the table in front of them, even the ever stoic Dehauser now looked at him with some surprise, he glanced at the piece and then back at the blonde with a look of approval. Unknown to Naruto had actually earned some respect in the older devil's eyes. How many of you here can say the same? Naruto asked, any trace of his playful persona now gone, he looked from devil to devil and noticed that even Roygon was staring at him with a serious expression, the fourth and fifth rank devils looked at him wide-eyed, their expressions even showing a bit of awe. Naruto did notice that Dehauser had adjusted his arms in front of his chest so that his hands could be seen slightly, to his surprise, the man also held a red king piece in between his fingers. So only the emperor seemingly made it to the top without any help Naruto thought to himself, he knew Dehauser was powerful, he had to be in order to reign at the top, to make it there using only his strength though, that was something else completely, if the gap between him and Roygon was that large without the piece, Naruto wondered how large it would be with it. Just like Dehauser, Naruto's respect for the man went up immensely. Beelzebub stood up as Naruto made his chess piece disappear and chuckled to himself softly, this day is certainly full of surprises, you wouldn't mind meeting me in a few days to discuss that king piece would you? Naruto shook his head, excellent, now then, I look forward to seeing you all compete, Uzumaki, you've challenged two very powerful people today, the underworld will watch your career with great interest, the man disappeared via his magic circle leaving the top five to themselves. Well that was intense, Roygon said, her cheerful persona back on display as she looked at the blonde, if you want a match I am sure we can set something up, she said as she slid up next to him, running the back of her index finger down his cheek, maybe we can discuss something over dinner sometime. Tisk. I am out of here, Virgil spat, a sentiment that was mirrored by Adamas as both of them disappeared from the room. Dehauser stood up and created a magic circle underneath him as well, I am sure I'll be seeing you very soon Uzumaki, he said before disappearing. Now alone, the two devils stayed silent for a few moments before the woman broke the silence, so dinner? Naruto smirked, he liked this woman, in the end he agreed to get in contact with her to discuss a potential rating game between the two, having finished their business, the last two devils vacated the premises. XXXXXXXXXX Naruto reappeared in the master bedroom of the compound he owned in Kuo and threw himself on the bed, landing on his back, he closed his eyes and extended his senses around the entire place. Only three people are here right now, he glanced at the clock he had sitting atop a small drawer next to his bed and saw it was only about 4 pm, the small party they were throwing to celebrate their victory over Badiz was Megaman's idea but it quickly caught traction and they agreed to do it today at 5. They're probably out buying everything, he thought to himself as he put his arms behind his head, his eyes quickly darted to his door which began opening a second later, Harabelle walked in and placed three bags on the ground at the foot of the bed. She must have just gotten back he realized as he took in her clothing, rather than her usual white uniform she wore, she had on black skin tight pants along with a white tank top and black shoes, she stretched and bent over to undo her laces and kick her shoes off. The blonde couldn't help but appreciate her wonderful ass, even if it was still covered. Everyone is out buying stuff for the party she said, confirming his earlier thoughts, how did the meeting go? She asked as she began wiggling herself out of her pants, Naruto took a second to respond, eyes still mesmerized by the sight in front of him, it wasn't the first time had seen her undress but it still captivated him the same every time. About as expected, he replied, admiring her black lacy panties, I let both Dehauser and Roygon know I plan to challenge them soon, it turns out Dehauser is most likely the only one in the top 5 aside from me who isn't boosting his power with a king piece. Harabelle made her way onto the bed, crawling towards him as he spoke, you're sure? She asked as she hovered over him. Yup, he summoned it discreetly enough to let me see it, 
Other than that I have a meeting with Beelzebub to discuss it in the future. I am free the rest of the day, he said as his hands reached up to gently rub her sides up and down. That's good, we have an hour before everyone returns. Maybe we can start our celebration early. To entice him even further, she sat upright on top of him and pulled her tank top up over her head, revealing a black bra. The woman quickly reached behind her and undid the straps, allowing the bra to fall and revealing her breasts to her king. Naruto's eyes were naturally drawn to them, you're awfully forward today, he teased, taking one of her nipples in between his fingers. I don't have Kagaya here to hog you so I am taking advantage of this moment, I have an hour with you to myself, she had to bite her lip when he started playfully pulling on her nipple he was playing with. Well, who am I to deny you? He sat up, pressing his chest against hers and rested his hands on her hips while she threw her arms around his neck, the two blondes closed the distance between their mouths and engaged in a kiss that started slow and sensual but quickly got more aggressive, tear bit on his bottom lip and slowly began rocking her panty-covered ass on him. Naruto reached up to knead one of her breasts with one hand while the other rubbed her womanhood over the fabric covering it, after only a few seconds he could feel it begin to dampen and he knew she was ready. Pulling back, he quickly discarded his shirt and was about to reach for his pants but stopped when Tyr placed one of her hands over his and shook her head. Lay down, ill do it, she ordered, seeing no reason to argue, Naruto laid back and let the woman do as she pleased, Tyr once again hovered over him and began kissing his neck, making her way down his chest and stomach until she reached his waist, her small hands made quick work on the button on his pants and unzipped them. To help her out slightly he raised himself up so that she could pull his pants down with ease, she looked up at him with a look no porn star could dream to match and pulled down his boxers letting his cock free. There we go, she purred, just looking at her was enough to make it begin to rise up in excitement, Tear wasted no time and took his member into her mouth, keeping only the tip in at first before beginning to take more. Naruto reached forward and moved some stray hair out of the woman's beautiful face so he could see her better, she locked eyes with him and slowly began to take more of him into her mouth, the blonde could feel her tongue gliding across him as she inched closer to his pelvis, just before her nose could touch his body he felt himself touch the back of her throat and she stopped. Gak tear coughed and pulled back, her eyes slightly watery from partially choking, she looked up at him, her hand still stroking up and down and took him in again. This was one of the reasons Naruto loved tear, she was committed, if she wanted to do something, she'd try again and again until she did it, the woman hummed lighty this time and took him deeper and deeper until finally, she was able to take him in completely. Naruto's cock was enveloped in wet warmth that almost made him blow his wad right then and there, grabbing her by the hair he gently pulled back, taking great pleasure in her tongue still trailing him as he did so. What's wrong? She asked, taking deep breaths, she was breathing heavily and had even reached into her panties to stimulate herself sometime during her blowjob. Nothing. That was amazing but it's time to have some real fun, he replied, the woman smirked at him and stood over him before slowly pulling her panties down, from his position he was able to see she was nice and wet, some of her wetness had even clung to the panties as she pulled down, connecting to her womanhood with a small strand. She tossed the wet panties off to the side and squatted down until the head of his cock was brushing up against her entrance, Naruto enjoyed the feeling of his head rubbing back and forth against her lips as she teased herself, oh how he wanted to grab her by the hips and impale her, but had let her have her fun. Finally, after a bit of teasing she slowly began to sink down on him, Naruto let out a small hum of pleasure as he felt her walls tighten up around him as he sheathed himself inside her, likewise Tear let out a sensual moan as she could feel herself being stretched by her king. Fuck your nice and tight Naruto complimented, now taking hold of her hips. Tear smiled as she began to bounce up and down on him and placed her hands on his chest for support, Naruto smirked to himself as the tanned beauty currently impaling herself on him closed her eyes and bit her lip to try and keep her moans down, it didn't do much good as he was hitting her sweet spot which would make her raise her voice. He reached around behind her and smacked each cheek as she came down, the tightening of her walls after each smack was not missed, smiling mischievously, he smacked one cheek after another every time she landed. Oh fuck, she purred after one particularly hard smack, Naruto, I am gonna, she didn't finish her sentence. Instead speeding up her motions like she was in distress, he saw the glazed look in her eyes as she tried to speed up her orgasm, part of him wanted to chuckle at her desperation and delay it but he stopped himself. He could feel his own release coming and he wanted to have her seeing stars. He rolled them over so she was laying on her back and grabbed one of her legs. Throwing it over his shoulder he turned her slightly so she was on her side. Allowing him to pump deeper into her, Tear tightened up as much as she could and gripped the bedsheets as hard as she could, seeing this. Naruto drilled into her with as much ferocity as he could muster, he was glad almost no one was home as the sound of the headboard hitting the wall would easily give away what they were doing, they'd been going at it for well over 20 minutes now and he wanted to make it count. 
Don't stop Naruto. Please don't stop. I am so close, Tear cried, thrusting back trying to match his pace. I don't plan to, he hammered away at her for five more minutes before it finally happened, Tear began to convulse slightly, her mouth opening into a silent scream as her orgasm finally hit, while she was experiencing nirvana, Naruto made sure to keep his pace to add to the pleasure she was feeling. Like Tear his release finally hit as well, just as hers was dying down, thrusting in as far as he could go he emptied himself, the feeling of filling up a beautiful woman like Tear never failed to leave him with a heightened sense of accomplishment, he stayed buried inside of her for a minute or two, filling her to the brim with his seed. He could feel Tear's womanhood pulsing as if trying to milk every last drop from him, he briefly wondered how he didn't have a kid yet with how often he came inside both Tear and Kagaya but didn't dwell on it for too long, this was about Tear and making sure she was well taken care of. Finally his release came to an end and he pulled himself out of her, inch by inch he removed himself, having to fight against her walls who were adamant that he stayed buried there, her pussy was still convulsing slightly once he was out, opening and closing slightly, no doubt still sensitive from her orgasm. Like Shed done earlier he made his way over until he was on top of her, well? How are you feeling? He asked. Tear slowly turned her head to him and brought his head down for a kiss, their two lips mushed together slowly for a second before parting, amazing, she replied tiredly but with a smile on her face, Naruto really wished she would smile more instead of always having her serious demeanor on display. Well I hope you aren't spent because we still have plenty of time, he shot back lightly nibbling on her neck. Her eyes widened slightly as she was turned around to lay on her stomach, wait, I am still sensitive oh she moaned as she felt him enter her again. Naruto took it slow this time, letting her take a moment to prepare herself for another pounding, sorry tear, but you're just too beautiful for me to only have you once, he said leaning down to plant some kisses on her lower back. The woman looked back and even though he could tell she was clearly tired she sent him a challenging smirk, fine, show me how beautiful you think I am. For the remainder of their time Tear experienced four more mind-blowing orgasms as well as one facial, after Naruto blew his last load inside her again he pulled out and watched as the woman let herself fall on her back on the bed with her eyes closed. I'll join you guys in a bit, she groaned, but the smile on her face didn't disappear, I won't be able to walk right now, she said in amusement. Naruto smiled and planted a kiss on her forehead before heading to the shower, he could sense most everyone out back and wanted to enjoy some of the food he could smell cooking. Twenty minutes later he joined the festivities dressed in regular black jeans and a grey button-up shirt. Yo, he greeted as he took a plate and served himself some of the food that Baz B had cooked up. About damn time you joined us, Grimjow replied with a mad smirk on his face. I was busy, he shot back, Tsunade who had just served Megaman seconds glared at him, I am sure you were, you're lucky the two kids came straight out here so they didn't have to hear you and tear fucking like rabbits, I swear you kids don't, she grumbled as she walked away maybe they'd gotten a little carried away. He made a mental note to buy her something nice to have her overlook this, had forgotten how Shed basically taken on the mother role for Mob and Megaman, seeing as they were young and impressionable, Shed said on more than one occasion that she didn't want them picking up bad habits from Grimjow and Baz B. An hour into their little celebration, Tyr decided to finally join them, she had her usual stoic look on her face again but he was sure everyone could tell she had a slight limp in her step, as they enjoyed their food and were talking about the match or anything else that came up almost everyone sensed a powerful presence show up at the front door. You expecting anyone? Marileona asked curiously. It's Azazel Sama, Kalawarner responded as she took a bite from her food, since Shed picked to work for Naruto Shed been given the role of a maid while at the compound and thus wore a traditional black and white maid outfit, fortunately for her none of them mistreated her and she actually found herself getting along with most people in the house. She hoped he'd be here to get her back but instantly shot that down, if had wanted her he wouldn't have agreed to let her new boss decide what happened to her. Naruto stood up and made his way into the house, only to return a moment later with the governor general of the fallen angels in tow. Baz, set him up with some food, Kalawarner, get the man a drink, he ordered. Azazel smiled as the food was given to him and thanked everyone for allowing him to join in on their festivities. Delicious, he complimented the food, I have to say, I was really impressed with that rating game, he continued, I bet on you to win after our chat, but I definitely wasn't expecting you to kill him, you've got the entire supernatural world talking about it. Naruto took a sip of his drink and smirked, I did tell you I was confident didn't I? The fallen angel leader nodded and took a sip of his drink, you did, I just wasn't expecting you to off a member of the top 5, I don't think anyone was, you guys shut him and his peerage down and made it look easy. That managed to get some smug looks from some of the members in the peerage. I am glad you enjoyed yourself, now I do have to ask, why are you here? The blonde wondered. 
Azazel immediately took on his serious face and put his food and drink down, as you know, rating games between big names can be watched by all sorts of supernatural species, not just devils, Naruto nodded, I have no doubt that the devils, angles, fallen angels, and even other factions know about your power now, some of them will most likely seek you out to have you join them, and not all of them will take no for an answer. You're referring to the Chaos Brigade? Naruto asked. If Azazel was surprised he didn't show it, you're familiar with them. Yeah. I ran into one of their members a while ago and got some information out of them, Naruto replied. So you're aware that they're led by the infinite dragon god? Azazel questioned. Naruto answered with another nod, yup, so is that what you came for? To warn us about her? Partially, I am here to propose an alliance between you and the fallen angels, the man revealed, Naruto narrowed his eyes slightly, while they were definitely the smallest of the three factions, they still had a large number of members in their ranks. Azazel must have seen his look as he decided to quickly continue, while I am sure you can take care of yourselves, even you would lose some of your people if Ophis sent the entirety of her forces after you, not only that but you'd also have some very powerful and resourceful people on your side including myself and the Hakuryuko to name too. What do you get out of this? Tyr asked, taking a seat next to the blonde, you've been telling us about what you can offer us, but I am sure there's something beneficial to you for you to make this offer. That's correct young lady, we get a deterrent. It's no secret that the war between the three factions isn't over, we're simply at a ceasefire. You don't have your own house and haven't sworn yourself to the Satans so you're not officially part of the underworld, they wouldn't attack knowing that you're backing us up, likewise heaven would also think twice knowing we had you on our side. It's not guaranteed but it does make the situation a little more controllable, I don't expect you to answer now. Why don't you take a few days and then give me a call once you've made up your mind, he said as he stood up and handed the blonde king a business card. Naruto looked over the card and saw magical runes etched into the card. I'll discuss it with my peerage and give you a call by tomorrow, if that's all you're free to stay, there's plenty of food to go around, Naruto replied with his carefree persona back in place. Azazel smiled but shook his head, as fun as that sounds, I really must be heading back, if Shemazai finds out I was just hanging out hell be pissed, again thank you for the food and I'll be expecting your call, the mons black wings sprouted from his back and he took to the skies. Naruto's eyes followed the man until he disappeared into the horizon and turned his attention back to the business card. He had to think about this, all of these words would accurately fit the mood of the lavish office deep within the Vipula clan's estate, seated around a small conference table were four lords of the underworld, three of the four listening as Lord Vipula said his piece. Seated silently while waiting for the man to finish were the clan heads of the Belphegor clan, the Bael clan, and finally the Abaddon clan, the last of which still had an angry scowl on his face, even though it had been a few days since the raiding game that had seen the demise of Badiz, it was still one of the hottest topics in the underworld. The Abaddon clan's reputation had taken a severe blow as a consequence of their typical boasting of the former third rank member of the raiding games, since had been killed, all sorts of whispers had gone around, some clans felt like they'd gotten what they deserved while others, such as the ones whose heads were seated in the room, saw the severity of what had happened. Which leads us here, he concluded slamming his fist on the wooden table, what do we do now? The four Satans will not do anything about Bedez's death since it was technically a clan affair that every party involved agreed to. After the declaration, everyone looked towards Lord Bael who rested his elbows on the table with his hands laced together, his eyes closed in silent contemplation as the other three lords discussed. Even without opening his eyes, he could feel their judging gaze on him, although it wasn't unwarranted by any means, he was old and mature enough to recognize the consequences of falling out against one of his own. The fact that this meeting was happening was undeniable proof of that. All around the underworld similar meetings like this one had become a common occurrence. The shift in power that had happened seemingly overnight was the main agenda of most meetings, Naruto had quite literally appeared out of thin air after not having been seen for years and did what most believed to be impossible, it was highly unlikely for certain devils to be removed from their positions, so for someone to show up and shake things up the way he did was a cause for alarm for many of the older devils. Lord Abaddon was the first to rally the Elder Devils to try to do something, having had his hands deep within the corruption of the raiding games, had taken the largest loss out of everyone in the room, Lord Belphegor was easy to gain an audience with as one of his own was currently sitting in the number 2 position, it wasn't a stretch to believe that she would be next, and they were right. Lord Bael was there because this was primarily his fault, though no one knew for sure if this would have happened regardless of his personal affairs, who was to say Uzumaki wouldn't simply challenge Roigun or Dehauser instead. Lord Vipula, while not being one of the most influential devils, was well connected, and even offered his residence for the meeting, his primary concern was how much his already shaky influence and prestige would change if the boy continued making waves the way he has, 
The Vipula clan was already low ranked compared to the others sharing the room with him, and if they went down any further, he could kiss his future goodbye. They'd begun by trying to be granted an audience with the Satans over the current state of affairs, which was just political talk for Badez's death but were only met with silence, despite their best efforts, nothing would be done due to the nature of the games and agreement struck beforehand, the massive influence they had together amounted little to nothing in this situation, everything was already set in stone. Well have to take things into our own hands, Lord Abaddon responded with an impressive amount of self-control, the lords weren't sure if he was more upset with the former member of the Bael clan or with the head of said clan. Lord Bael opened his eyes and rolled them discreetly, none of them had seen combat in decades and any power they currently wielded was through their positions and influence alone, Badiz was physically stronger than everyone in the room and was killed with little issue, what could they possibly do? What do you propose we do then? He asked, giving the man his full attention. Without missing a beat, he responded, what we've always done, manipulate the rating games. Lord Belphegor shook his head, I briefly contemplated the idea but it won't work. Uzumaki and his peerage showed how strong they are both individually and together, he won't lose any of the matches they have coming up, his opponents are too weak to be of any use. Abaddon frowned and leaned back in his chair, crossing his arms as he did so, we're not focusing on the weaklings, he spat, I don't know when, but soon hell set his sights on Roygan and Dehauser, and when that happens well act. It will have to be with Roygan, Lord Bale commented. Dehauser is untouchable and has expressed clear disdain for the politics of the raiding games, if we attempt to interfere with his matches it'll only set us back. Everyone turned to Lord Belphegor who now seemed to be lost in thought. Lord Belphegor, one of the men called out, your input if you would. The man sighed, a few days ago Roygan informed me that she had invited Uzumaki over for dinner to discuss a potential raiding game between the two. The lords were surprised, they'd expected this move but not this fast. You must stall the meeting, Lord Bale remarked, his mind already going over multiple different scenarios, stall or convince her to set the date for the raiding game at a time when we're ready to act. I don't think they'll allow him to challenge her for the position so soon, we'll still have time to plan this out carefully, Lord Vapula. Lord Belphegor ran a hand down his face and sighed in exasperation before standing up, we should reconvene again in a month's time, they have yet to set an actual date to sit down and discuss the details of the game, it'll do what I can in the meantime. Everyone nodded and soon the room was vacant minus the owner of the estate, Lord Vapulas exhaled shakily and prepared himself a drink of the strongest stuff he had available, chugging it down he slammed the glass on the table and swiped a hand across his mouth. This is all Bale's fault, he muttered angrily to himself, he began pacing around the office, his mind racing with ways that he could benefit from the events that had taken place, suddenly, he stopped as an idea came to him, I need to meet with him, if all goes south I can at least save myself. Having made his mind up, he left his office and began plotting how he could meet with the newest powerhouse without tipping anyone off. XXXXXXXXXXX. Are you sure it's a good idea to have a meeting with Azazel by yourself? Kagaya sat at the dinner table looking over at Naruto while trying to fix Megaman's posture, she then picked up her spoon and started to eat what was on the table as she continued, Azazel isn't one to be arrogant like Bedez, he may appear a fool, but trust me, he's far from being one. I appreciate the concern but it'll be fine, he reassured her, he has no reason to be hostile to us, yet, even if he did, he will not act on it, the Monsa scientist and knows there are too many unknown variables pertaining to us for him to try something, he finished. Warner, dressed in a standard black and white maid's dress complete with white headpiece, made herself known and began clearing off the empty plates on the table, while doing so she spoke. He's right, she said, confirming Naruto's assessment of the man, having worked for him for as long as she had, she knew how he worked very well, he's curious about you personally as well as your power, it's pretty safe to assume that the other higher-ups are interested as well, but they won't go looking for you the way Azazel has, they'll play it safe, observe from a distance. Naruto nodded thankfully at her and turned back to Kagaya, see, we have nothing to worry about, he said happily, causing the woman to roll her eyes, it was strange seeing the stoic, regal woman do something most would consider rude, around them however, she had no issues letting them see the less uptight version of her. I am pretty curious as to what he has to say regarding the alliance and how it's gonna benefit both parties. Kagaya narrowed her milky white eyes at him marginally, it's unusual for you to take this alliance seriously, either I don't know you as much as I think I do or there is actually something in that alliance that has caught your interest, something you're not saying to us. Naruto shook his head and continued knowing that he could not hide from Kagaya's sharp senses, he also mentioned that the Hakuryuko was with them and I want to see what he's about, I've heard of him from some of the people we've encountered, 
I want to see if he's as strong as they say he is. Do you want to fight him? Megaman asked, wiping her mouth with the back of her hand, an action that got her a light scolding. Naruto checked himself over once and made his way to the door. I wouldn't be against it. Bedez was a disappointment who had nothing going for him once his whole ability was shut down. Well, speaking of, as he said his piece, Naruto kept his spoon down on the empty plate he just ate from. He got up from his seat and looked at the clock before turning his head back towards Kagaya and the others. It's about time I met with our fallen acquaintance, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Once outside he pulled out the card Azazel had given him and tossed it on the ground before stepping over it, a bright magical circle appeared below his feet, slowly spinning clockwise growing brighter until Naruto was gone in a flash. When he reappeared he noted he was inside a large well-furnished office, standing across from the governor general himself, the man was sitting on a large black chair with his legs lazily resting on the desk in front of him until he took note of his guest. Ah Naruto, I am glad to see you decided to accept my invitation, he greeted happily, standing up as he did so. Naruto shook the mon's hand and sat down in the chair provided for him. Let's just say I was curious about this alliance Naruto responded calmly. Azazel smiled briefly and sat back down, now sitting up straight. Let's get down to business then, he began with a straight face, the mon's entire demeanor changed similar to how it had when Head joined them for their impromptu party, now though, he cut a more imposing figure and Naruto could easily see why people would follow him, the man in front of him was different from the one Head seen moments ago. I am not sure if you're aware of this or not but you've caused ripples across the underworld since your match against Bedez, you proved yourself to be one of the biggest new players in the game and have undoubtedly made enemies of a lot of powerful people, Azazel began, pausing momentarily to gauge the young mon's reaction. Naruto's face was stoic, silently taking in every word the man was saying, seeing that he was paying attention, the governor general continued. What I am offering you is backup as well as information, the old families in the underworld won't be all you will have to deal with, you're already familiar with the Chaos Brigade, soon enough they'll either ask you to join or try to get rid of you if they see you as a hindrance to their goals, your peerage is incredibly strong from what I saw from your match, but one peerage against the might of Ophis won't be enough, he explained. Naruto hummed and rubbed his chin in thought, but it'll be enough with the fallen angels. He asked in a curious tone. In a display of honesty, Azazel shook his head no, while our numbers are nothing to scoff at, we're still not enough to fully counter a group with as many members and species as them, an alliance will give us a better chance in the event of an attack, and it helps the both of us in taking care of our problems in the underworld. How so? Naruto asked, you have no allies in the underworld, for all intents and purposes, your clan doesn't exist and I can think of at least three different families likely to be plotting against you already, he said, pausing to take a sip of his drink. Should it be known that you have connections with the fallen angels, they would think twice before acting, as going against you would mean that they are going against us as well. Which would violate the terms of the ceasefire that's currently in place between the three major factions, Naruto finished. Azazel nodded, exactly, on the other side, I gain a powerful ally, if any devils decide to attack us, they'd also have to know that they would be going against you, the devils already know who they are dealing with, or to be more clear, they do not know who they are dealing with, in your case, if they had thought twice before, with you on our side, they would think three times over before they dare make a move on my people. Naruto could understand where Azazel was going with this, he definitely knew of some families that would do whatever it took to increase their own status, his former clan being one of them, although there were still a few hiccups to what he said. No matter how I look at this, I can only see this alliance being more favorable to myself than it is for you. Azazel raised his eyebrow at Naruto, how so? The fallen governor asked with his curiosity being made known. I admit, there are families in the underworld that would not hesitate to risk the balance just to increase their status, my former clan being one of the mentioned, however, they would not be brazen enough to openly declare war on the fallen, definitely not with the satans around. Naruto stared at Azazel as he continued on with his piece, as you said, you gain a powerful ally, but at what cost? The aforementioned families are hostile with me, yes, but they are neutral with you, and if the Chaos Brigade is as powerful as you state them to be, then my assistance would hardly bring much to your table, in fact, you would be better off allying yourself with my enemies. Azazel grinned at what he had said before he started laughing out loud, much to Naruto's confusion. If I had liked you before, then I like you even more now, Naruto Uzumaki, as you have said, you bring a lot of trouble to me and hardly could contribute anything at all if I may put it in a crude manner, and you're right, I would find more strength and influence in offering my allegiance to the other families. The fallen governor's gaze then changed to that one of seriousness. However, you put more on my table than you think, trust me, 
Yes, I make enemies but I can be rest assured that you will not turn your back on me cause you need me as much as I need you, even if you don't realize it, besides, those clans will eventually try to break the ceasefire treaty. This balance that was created has been shaky from the start, only through a true alliance between fallen, angels and devils can that be solved, starting with you. Naruto looked at him curiously, so that is your end goal then, to have an alliance between the angels, devils and fallen alike, he asked. It's not bad, isn't it? We gain more together than we do as enemies, Azazel replied. And what if I choose to join the Chaos Brigade instead? Naruto asked, trying to gauge where the mon's head was at. Azazel looked at Naruto astounded before he burst out in laughter once again, well, you can, in fact, it may even benefit you since Ophis values powerful allies, however, I doubt you would like to be under someone as much as you like to be over them. Naruto contemplated what Azazel said and much of what he had was true, he would rather take the choice of being his own boss rather than being someone else's lackey, like they say, rather be a rat's head than a lion's tail. So? Are we good? Azazel asked, gauging the young devil's uptake. Naruto shook his head since he was hardly done, not yet, there is one more thing, the angels, wouldn't an alliance between the two of us also cause problems with them as well? He asked. Depending on how you look at it, it could be seen as the fallen angels and devils working together. The older man shook his head, I can see where you're coming from but you don't have to worry about that, if heaven thinks of it like that I can easily arrange a meeting with Michael to clear the air. Naruto leaned forward in his seat and motioned at an empty cup that sat alongside Azazel's, the man nodded and Naruto filled it slightly before drinking the content, it burned slightly as it went down his throat but it was pretty good. From everything we've discussed I have to say it sounds pretty good for both of us, I do have to wonder though, is security the only thing you're after with this proposal? Azazel's serious demeanor finally broke and a mischievous smile replaced his stern look, well, I suppose there's one thing I would like to add in our agreement. There it was, Naruto thought amusedly. I want to learn more about your infinity, he revealed, Warner had it right on the money, throughout my life I've encountered plenty of powerful innate abilities from the Bale's power of destruction to the Belphegor's famous crack ability. Naruto knew about the power of destruction, had seen it plenty of times when he was still with them, what he did take note of however, was the Belphegor clan's ability, despite his goofy demeanor when talking about things that interested him, Naruto knew he purposely mentioned the Belphegor family. Roigen was ranked number two and next on his list, the man let him know that he knew about them, and if he knew them, then he also knew about the Belial family, Naruto mentally smirked at the mon's cleverness. This must be what he meant by information, Naruto thought to himself, had heard of the raiding game shortly after it had been arranged and now told him he had knowledge on the other players that wouldn't be as easy to come across. Your infinity ability is by far the most interesting to me, what I saw from the raiding game only further piqued my curiosity so I'd like to be able to study it. How so? Azazel smirked, first I'd like to see it in combat up close. Naruto blinked, so you want to spar? This could be exciting, he thought, Azazel was certainly stronger than Badiz. The man raised his hands and shook his head, no 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 you misunderstand, I need to observe what goes on, you'll be fighting someone else, he's actually been pretty eager to meet you. Almost as if rehearsed, the door opened and in walked a young man with silver hair, he wore a dark green versus neck shirt under an open black jacket, red and black pants along with black shoes, the man had his hands in his pockets and kept his eyes locked on him as he made his way over. He was a devil, Naruto could tell that much easily, unlike most, he had a certain air about him, he carried himself well, he looked nonchalant but posed in such a way that he'd be ready to act in a heartbeat, if Azazel wanted him to be the one he sparred against, that could only mean he was the Hakuryuko. The two young men stood across from each other, both waiting for the other to break the silence, it was Naruto who did so. Are you wearing chaps? Azazel broke out in laughter while the young mon's eyebrow began to twitch in aggravation, before he could respond, the fallen angel leader composed himself and wrapped an arm around the silver-haired youth. Naruto, allow me to formally introduce you to Valley, the current Hakuryuko. Valley, a pleasure to meet you, Naruto greeted, holding a hand out. Valley accepted the hand, Azazel told me you were strong, so when he told me I'd get the chance to battle you I couldn't help but get a little excited. Naruto looked over at Azazel who had a look of triumph on his face, he knew things would go his way and had this whole thing prepared ahead of time. You're not the only one, Naruto responded, the governor clapped once, great, Let's get moving to the training ground, let me get a barrier set up and well get started, he said with glee. Naruto rolled his neck slowly and began to stretch, the older man came back a few minutes later with a few fallen angels following him outside to prepare the barrier, once outside he looked up to see a large translucent white dome formed with magical runes flowing through them. 
All right boys, he called out. Just a few rules. No killing obviously. Naruto, if you wouldn't mind I'd like to observe that red ability as well as the general infinity technique you showed me. Naruto and Valley nodded and watched as Azazel moved himself aside leaving them in the center of the area. Ready? Naruto asked. Valley materialized intricate white and blue armor on his body complete with a metallic tail and helmet, two light blue wings resembling that of a dragon sprouted from his back with small particles of light escaping slowly. Vanishing dragon. Balance breaker a deep voice resonated from within the armor. Ready. In the time it took a person to blink, they moved, the two young devils met in the air, Naruto's forearm clashing with Valis armored one, the brief deadlock broke and the two began seemingly teleporting around the battlefield, punches and kicks being thrown every time they appeared. Naruto parried the incoming punch and retaliated with a fast and precise spinning kick to Valis' stomach, even though he connected with metal, he felt no pain and pushed on with the attack, Valley let out a grunt of pain as Naruto's leg connected and found himself spiraling downward. His wings expanded and shifted in order to take him back up into the air but it was a fruitless effort, Naruto appeared directly above him and put a hand on his masked face before using his power to propel him forwards which caused them to head back down to the ground. The silver-haired devil hit the ground with tremendous force, so much so that a small crater formed at the point of impact, the balance breaker's mask remained in place due to the hand holding onto it but the bits and pieces of his armor shattered. Forcing him up by the head, Naruto tossed him aside forcefully, blue wings sprouted from the mons back and took him back up into the skies, his upper body's armor reappeared in a blue flash and in a second, Valley was on the attack again. His hands were extended and multiple light blue magical circles appeared around his hands, they grew in size rapidly and began firing blue blasts in rapid succession. Knowing that Azazel wanted to study his technique, Naruto stood in place and watched as the blasts approached him, small explosions rocked the area and both Azazel and Valley watched in suspense as debris and smoke filled the area. That wasn't bad, Naruto commented from inside the smoke, when it began to clear, the fallen angel and devil noticed the blonde had taken absolutely no damage whatsoever, the blonde noticed the older man spectating, keeping a close eye on him and his surroundings, what he was looking for was unknown. Valley clicked his teeth and flew down at breakneck speeds, this was the first opponent had fought that had lasted longer than a minute or so. Naruto met him in the air once more and began trading blows once more, something he noticed immediately was that Valley was very reliant on his sacred gear and devil magic, he did everything he could to evade and try to blast him away. Catching another overhand right, Naruto pulled him closer and dug a knee into his gut, letting go of his hand, he delivered two punches to the face and a strong uppercut, blood flew out of the small gaps in the mask, a testament to how powerful the physical attacks were, just as Valis' body was rising into the air due to the force of the hit, Naruto lifted a finger up in front of him. Down below Azazel's eyes lit up in excitement while Valis narrowed. A red orb began to quickly form at the tip of Naruto's finger and instinctively, Valis' hand reached forward. Divide Albion's loud voice echoed from Valis' armor. Naruto felt his body distort for a brief second and the orb shrunk in size by half, unfortunately for Valis. It grew in size twice as fast and began to glow brighter before a white flash blinded everyone. A large explosion followed suit, the balance breaker shattered, and the young man was sent flying back towards the barrier. In an impressive display of resilience and stamina, Valley stood right back up after hitting the ground, a large glob of blood was spit out of his mouth and both his forehead and chest were bleeding. His arms were slightly burned but he seemed to be unconcerned with the damage, he had a large smirk on his face and looked like he was enjoying himself immensely. This is good, he said, I haven't met someone with abilities as interesting as yours, he admitted. His body began to glow and once again his entire body was covered in his balance breaker armor. You can go back into your balance breaker form that fast? Impressive, Naruto complimented genuinely. Before he had a chance to continue, Naruto paused when he sensed a familiar presence out in the distance, the barrier must only keep their energy inside, Naruto thought, he didn't know what she was doing here but he couldn't let the opportunity pass him by. Sorry Valley but we're gonna have to end this, the blonde called out. The devil in front of him bent his knees a little bit and propelled himself forward towards Naruto, meeting him in the center of their battleground, Naruto's fist met his, the blonde's other hand pointed a finger at him again and Valley was quick to back off and begin the dividing process. He knew something was off when Naruto smirked and stayed in place. Divide 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 Albion called out rapidly, Naruto's smirk only widened as the orb didn't budge and his power wasn't cut in half four times. What's going on? Valley asked in shock, Naruto didn't respond and let the attack go off. This time, when Valley hit the ground he didn't get back up instantly, the barrier went down and he rushed over to the down devil and helped him up, 
throwing his arm over his shoulder, he helped walk him over to the governor. How was that? Naruto asked, letting go of Valley who was finally getting his bearings back together. Incredible. I have so many tests I want to try, Azazel responded excitedly. Wait here while I get some equipment. Another test. No he didn't have time for that right now, looking over towards Valley who was slightly wincing, he spoke. Looks like the rumors about you are true, you are more fun to fight than Badiz, he told him, but you have a glaring weakness. The man didn't respond but kept his attention on him, wanting to hear him out. Your hand to hand combat is lacking, if you fight against someone who can overcome your divine dividing and they get in close you're in trouble, you might also want to incorporate some long range attacks or a weapon of some kind, he lectured. He's right, Valley, you're powerful but there's others out there who are stronger, like the man in front of you, it would do us well to increase our training intensity, Albion spoke out. Naruto nodded in agreement, he had to admit, Valley had potential, he had the makings of someone who would potentially be able to give him a run for his money in the future, that was assuming he was creative with his power. Tell you what, I need to get going but if you want to get stronger feel free to stop by to get some pointers, Azazel knows where I stay, he offered seriously before he smiled in a similar manner to Azazel, when he comes back, tell him I had something important to do. His own wings sprouted from his back and he took to the skies, his silhouette got smaller and smaller until he was a dot in the distance. Naruto couldn't help but chuckle to himself as he arrived in the center of Kuo and began enacting his plan, he could still feel her in the city, he had time, sending out a concentrated pulse of energy in her direction, he smiled to himself and entered the small restaurant. XXXXXXXX if she didn't have an image to maintain in front of the young devils before her, she would have let out an audible sigh. Dealing with the animosity between her king's little sister and Riser Fenix wasn't something that she was looking forward to, most everyone knew of the arrangement between the Gremory and Fenix clan, and most were accepting of it, the only person that was against it was Rias. Riser had come to Kuo to gloat about it almost being time for their marriage, and as expected it didn't go well, the two began to bicker with one another until members of their respective peerages were about to get involved, to put a stop to the escalating tension, she had no choice but to flare her power in order to get control of the situation once more. The two continued to bicker until the idea of settling the dispute via rating game was thrown into the equation, Rias mentioned how Naruto was able to take a position in the games despite that one being his first ever as long as both parties agreed. That's when the challenge was issued, Rias and her peerage would have an unofficial rating game against Riser, should Rias win, the marriage contract would be void and null, if Riser wins, the marriage plans continue as intended. While the two opposing sides discussed the terms of the game and arranged the date it would take place, Grafia felt it, her head snapped up when she felt a concentrated pulse of demonic energy aimed at them, at her. If everything has been decided, it's time I depart, Grafia announced with a bow, rather than disappearing back to the underworld, she left the school on foot and made her way to where she felt the energy, there were a few people in Kuo who could be responsible for the burst, but only one would aim it directly at her. To the average passerby, her face was the definition of stoic, those that knew her however, would be able to see the very small smile that shed let appear on her face, men and women glanced at her as she walked, no doubt due to the blue and white maid outfit she was donning but she paid them little mind. She was getting closer, Grafia was proven correct as upon turning around a street corner she was met with another street full of restaurants, that in and of itself didn't tell her anything, but the one nearest to her had a glowing sign outside the premises that read Grafia Lucifuge. She raised an eyebrow at the sign and turned her gaze to the restaurant itself, from the small plastic menu items they had depicted in the windows, it seemed they specialized in spicy food. I have some time to spare she thought to herself before entering, the moment she walked in, one of the employees came up to her and motioned her to follow him, he was a regular human but was still on guard on the off chance that it wasn't who she thought it was, she was led to a small booth that was almost in the corner of the room. She sat down with her back facing one of the walls so she could have a view of the entire place, in no less than a few seconds after she sat down, one of the younger employees placed a plate in front of her with an assortment of meat, rice, and a small bowl along with a drink. Seeing as no one was here to explain what was going on she thought about simply leaving, that thought was disrupted a moment later, Naruto suddenly appeared sitting in the seat across from her, though most of his body was frozen, courtesy of her magic, his arms were stuck to the table and his legs refused to move. Naruto let out a soft whistle while looking down at himself, amazing reaction time. This time, Grafia let out a sigh and thawed him out, care to explain this? She asked, pointing at the food and restaurant in general. The blonde shrugged, I sensed you were here in Kuo and wanted to see if I could see you for a bit, even if it was only for a moment. The strongest queen's face softened but she didn't respond, she kept her eyes on him and brought some food up a few inches from her mouth and blew slowly to cool it down, you set up a private booth this fast just to see me for a moment? She asked. 
Is it that surprising? I did tell you I'd like to take you out again, didn't I? He shot back smoothly. Grafia looked hummed and nodded. You did, she confirmed. You certainly wasted no time after our last dinner, did you? She teased. I don't think anyone expected you to make your debut the way you did. Naruto smirked. I saw an opportunity and took it, he responded. On another topic, though, how have you been? Busy. Incredibly, she replied, part of that is dealing with certain families, she added with a false glare. He winced, having an idea of one particular clan that was probably trying to cause problems for him. Azazel was onto something after all. Well, I am sorry if I've caused you more work. The older devil took a bite of her food and shook her head. I suppose this is a good way to start making it up to me. I also heard that Beelzebub wants a meeting with you to discuss something important, she probed. It seems she wasn't completely in the know about what went down regarding the Satans. Naruto nodded, that's right, he answered plainly. Grafia stared at him expectantly, waiting on him to continue only to narrow her eyes ever so slightly when he smirked, are you going to tell me why he's interested in meeting you? Maybe he wants to discuss what happened during the raiding game. He tried. The white-haired woman shook her head, he would have mentioned it, this is something he's personally invested in. Naruto rubbed his chin and made it look like he was thinking something over, I suppose I could let you know. Despite her best efforts, Naruto saw her lean forward ever so slightly, when he didn't continue she huffed, an action Naruto found endearing, so now I get Theatrix from one of the Satans in you. Great, she said sarcastically. If anyone could see her they wouldn't believe that this was the same stoic, powerful woman Shed built herself up to be. Naruto chuckled at her and replied, are you busy later tonight? To his delight she shook her head no, most of my duties have been handled, it's one of the few days I have to myself, that's why I can afford to be here right now. Then how about this, meet up with me later tonight and I'll tell you all about it, he offered. Grafia thought it over, she had no plans for the night and certainly wasn't going to take Seraphal on her offer to be on her show, she thought back to the dinner date she shared with the young man in front of her and the fun shed had throughout their time together. Very well, she agreed, does 9pm at your place sound okay? Perfect, he agreed, before pausing, wait, I don't think I've told you where I live. Taking a page out of his book, she smirked at him but didn't respond. Instead opting to finish eating her food, once done, the pair stood up and headed outside, they walked for a few minutes making small talk where he learned of her reason for being here in the first place, he didn't say anything but based on what he knew, Rias didn't stand a chance at the moment, it would be interesting to see how she handled this. Well I didn't plan on being led to a date when I came to Kuo today and certainly didn't expect another one planned for the same day, Grafia began. Naruto glanced at her and saw she was still looking forwards. I know it doesn't seem like it but I am flattered that you're going this far just because you wish to pursue something more, I am looking forward to tonight. Before Naruto could respond to her words he felt a pair of lips touch his cheek for a split second before she was gone, his eyes widened and his hand came up to the cheek as he realized what had just happened, needless to say he was going to have a great rest of his day. Naruto should have known he spoke too soon after leaving from his impromptu date with Grafia, stepping through the front door of his home. His eyes took in everything that was going on around him and it took everything he had to keep himself from sighing, Baz B and Grimjow were both lounging on the couch in the large living room, feet up on the decorative table, in their hands were a large family size bag of chips that they were enjoying. That in and of itself wouldn't have been too bad, Hell had joined them on occasion, right now, however, his eyes were glued to the over the top amount of crumbs the men were leaving all over the couch, across from where they were seated was what used to be a luxurious looking bar setup that was now partially destroyed part of the wood even had scorch marks. A small head peeked out from the remains to reveal a bashful looking Megaman whose hands just so happened to be smoking. Um, I thought I had better control of a new spell, she said in an apologetic tone, not trusting himself not to yell at the girl, he continued forward towards the kitchen, the kitchen area was just as large if not more so than the living room, seated at the dinner table by herself was his queen who had a neat setup in front of her as she filed her nails, a bored expression on her face. His nose picked up the scent of katsu and his attention was focused towards the medic and mother figure of his peerage, Suande who was hard at work preparing a meal, he mentally made a note to treat the woman to something nice since she seemed to be the only one not causing his blood pressure to rise at the moment. The blonde opened his mouth to speak but stopped himself just as the first word was forming, his eyes moved slowly from left to right as a broken piece of metal that he recognized as part of the fire pit from the backyard floated slowly across the room, Mob stood in front of him and bowed until he was almost at a 90 degree angle. I am sorry Naruto, Itadori tried to use a new technique during our spar and destroyed part of the pit, I am cleaning it up now, he apologized. Naruto could feel his brow beginning to twitch in annoyance as he watched his household fall apart, on a normal day perhaps he wouldn't care as much, 
they could always just buy new things, they had the money after all, at the moment though? You seem happy. His head turned towards Kagaya whose attention was still solely on her nails, she had her hand extended out and shook her head negatively, not satisfied with her work at the moment. Her comment only served to exasperate him more, her stoic face and soft monotonous tone of voice only made it worse, it was only because he knew she was genuine with her words that he didn't reply back with a sarcastic remark as he would towards someone like Grimjow. Pinching the bridge of his nose he took a deep breath to calm himself, I was until I walked inside. I am not sure what has you so upset. Tsunade chimed in, you join them more often than not, poor Kalawarner had been cleaning up after them all day. Where is she then? Naruto asked curiously, she was the maid for them now but the house was a mess. Living up to the motherly role, Tsunade replied, I had her stop and focus on cleaning upstairs, Megaman knows better than to practice her unstable spells in the house and the others are grown and can clean up after themselves. Naruto couldn't argue with that logic, I suppose that's true, unfortunately for everyone they're all going to play the role of maid, for a little bit. Letting off a bit of his demonic power, it didn't take more than a minute before the majority of his peerage was gathered in the kitchen, his eyes raked over everyone. Where's Leona? He asked, looking for the fire user. Out training, replied Tyr, Naruto nodded, at least one knew where to practice their destructive abilities, stop whatever you're doing at the moment, I need this house cleaned up, anything that isn't your room needs to be spotless, I don't want to see a speck of dust in the house or anything burned we're having company later tonight. We are, are you are? Tsunade asked, her gaze still focused on the food she was cooking. Naruto sighed, Grafia will be coming by tonight to discuss something important regarding Beelzebub, he replied honestly. Some of the men shook their heads but complied with the order, while everyone had their flaws, Naruto appreciated that they all listened when he was serious, that wasn't to say some didn't grumble in annoyance, mostly one of his knights and pawns, the blonde-haired medic however nodded her head in approval. It's good to see you have the sense to clean up if someone is coming over, she commented, or is it simply because it's her specifically? Her king didn't dignify that with a response and joined everyone in the cleaning process, luckily, they had magic on their side and what would have taken the entire day, only took a few hours, by the time they were finished, the house looked presentable both inside and out, the explosion damage caused by his more rambunctious members had been handled, the bar had been fixed, and for the most part, the house was clean. By the time they were finished, he had just enough time to shower up and change into something more appropriate, they wouldn't be leaving the house but that didn't mean he wouldn't look presentable, he now donned a black short sleeve button up along with dark blue pants and shoes. Had made sure to ask Tsunade if she thought it was much but she reassured him he was fine, at 9 o'clock on the dot, a knock sounded at his door. Damn, right on time, he thought, he mentally added punctual to the list of things he appreciated about her, though considering her job he supposed it was in her best interest to be on time for everything. He looked around the living room and his gaze locked onto Megaman, who was reaching into one of the compartments of the couch, with lightning fast speed, he dashed over to her, grabbing her by the neck of her shirt, and easily tossed her up the stairs, ignoring her cry of indignation, a quick snap of his fingers added the final touch to the room, opening the door, he was greeted with the sight of the strongest queen with her hands neatly in front of her. The maid dress he was used to seeing her in was gone and in its place was a lavender-colored blouse that exposed her shoulders, the sleeves of the blouse were loose and frilled while the top itself ended just past her stomach, along with the stop, she wore some short denim shorts that he didn't even know a woman like her would wear, not that he was complaining, to finish the ensemble she wore a comfy-looking pair of black flats, her hair was styled in the same way it had always been minus the maid headdress. You'll catch flies if your mouth remains open any longer, Grafia commented, her tone was still cool but he could detect the underlying mirth she felt in calling him out on his staring, Naruto's jaw closed with a firm snap and he mentally cursed at himself, he hadn't even realized his mouth had opened, real smooth. It wasn't as if he was gaping at her but it was definitely enough that she could see he appreciated what he saw. I am sorry, you look amazing, he commented with sincerity. This outfit isn't anything special, just something I picked up when I had some free time but thank you, I appreciate the compliment, she replied with a small smile. Naruto stepped aside allowing her to come in, Grafia took a moment to look around as she made her way toward the couch, he didn't know it but she appreciated that the place had been cleaned recently, being a maid herself she knew the signs that indicated a recently cleaned house, the lit fireplace creating a cozy environment didn't escape her notice either. Her power was ice based meaning even if it was really cold out, she would be mostly unaffected but it was still a kind gesture on his part. She took a seat on the couch with her hands folded in front of her looking as proper as could be. Would you like a drink? The blonde offered, the silver-haired woman pondered the offer for a second and nodded, something light if you wouldn't mind, 
alcohol from the human world wasn't as potent as some of the drinks from the underworld but some drinks packed a bit of a punch to them. The blonde served a small amount in two glass cups and made his way over to the couch, being careful not to spill any, handing the cup of light liquid to the woman, he sat down and took the first sip at the same time she did. Thank you, she said before crossing a leg over the other and turning her body slightly to face him, now, I believe you had something to tell me. Naruto smirked, she could hide it all she wanted but he could see the intrigue in her bright red eyes, the last time he saw a look like this from her was when she had caught him practicing using infinity all those years ago. You're referring to why Beelzebub wants to talk to me? He asked rhetorically. That's right, it's odd to see him take interest in a young devil unless he sees something in them that he finds interesting. In the past, there have been plenty of devils with unique magic that didn't catch his attention, she replied. Naruto leaned back into the cushion and raised his right hand with his palm facing upward, a small magical circle appeared slowly spinning clockwise, from it, a red king piece began to rise until it sat neatly in his hand. This is why Ajuka wants to talk. Greyfaya's eyes narrowed at the king piece in front of her, being in the position she was, she knew those were no longer issued and hadn't been since the early days of the evil piece system, it was a very closely guarded secret as to why those weren't in use anymore. How did you get your hands on a king piece? She asked, Greyfia shifted in her seat so she could take a closer look at the piece, Naruto felt good knowing she was comfortable enough to show a bit of emotion instead of her usual stoic facade, whereas the underworld saw the cold calculating gaze of the strongest queen, he was seeing her show genuine curiosity and not trying to hide it. When I was still living at the Bael estate I knew I wouldn't be able to get an evil piece set of my own if the clan head had a say in it, I planned to leave but one day I came across an old looking set, I used it for myself and that's the reason why the raiding game against Badiz took place with those stakes, he explained. Grafia nodded in understanding, her own experiences with the man had never been pleasant, he walked around like he owned the place, showed false respect to anyone. He claimed you stole a family set and used that as an excuse to try to have you executed, she concluded. Correct. While it's definitely possible for him to attempt that, it also answers why Lord Beelzebub has taken such an active interest in you, I assume you know the secret of the king piece? A nod was the answer, I attended my first briefing with Dehauser, Roygun, and the others, some of them didn't take too kindly to me being there so I let it be known that I made it as far as I did without the use of a king piece, he revealed, everyone seemed surprised but for different reasons, that's when Ajuka asked for a meeting, I assume hell want to gauge how much I know. It's surprising that he didn't force you to go with him at the time, Grafia commented, pausing for a moment to take another small sip of her drink, something like that would require immediate attention. Naruto mirrored her action but finished the contents of his drink, I've been told Beelzebub is a rather strange man but not a stupid one, he wouldn't do something if he didn't have a good reason for it. That was a sentiment the older devil could agree with, while not as jovial and childish as the current Lucifer, he had his own quirks that made him strange in a way, seeing things from a perspective no one else could see was one of them, maybe he just saw something or knew something that made him choose to wait. So? Was it worth coming here tonight? Naruto asked. Grafia rested an elbow on her knee and her head on an open palm while looking at him out of the corner of her eye, though her head was facing forward, he could still see the upward curve of her lips. I suppose it has, you're more interesting than I originally thought Naruto. Now it was the blonde's turn to look intrigued, putting his cup on the ground he pushed himself forward to sit up straight. You can't just say something like that and not continue, he pressed. The small smile grew wider and she let out a melodic laugh, at that point. Naruto was glad none of his more outspoken peerage members could see him, he was sure the dopey smile he wore due to making her laugh would be the topic for days to come. The first time I met you you were practicing an attack strong enough to garner the strongest devil's attention, she began. Strongest at the time he mentally corrected, you disappeared for years and when you returned, you made your debut by killing one of the most influential devils in the underworld and forcibly taking his spot in the rankings, something that had never been done before, she continued. The amazement in her tone was evident and Naruto couldn't help but feel proud of himself. She was older than him and had no doubt encountered plenty of devils young and old, for her to speak highly about them was something most young devils could only dream of, but she wasn't finished. Finally you possess a king piece, that itself doesn't mean much to me, it's the fact that you have it and refuse to use it even after knowing the potential benefits it could have on you, you've made your intentions both towards me and the raiding games clear, that piece could make the seemingly insurmountable task that much easier but you've refused, now she sat up and turned to face him fully. That gives me a glimpse of the man you are and I really like what I see so far, I was doubtful about what you said to me that night during dinner, this has erased any doubt in my mind, I am truly flattered. Naruto didn't know how to respond for a second, that was the most he, and perhaps, anyone would ever hear her speak in a single breath but the words carried enormous weight. 
Then you know I plan to keep my word, she nodded, stood up, and sighed, I do, as much as I would like to talk a little while longer, I am afraid I must be going. Naruto stood up and took her cup from her hands, you're welcome here anytime you like. I appreciate it, thank you for a wonderful day, I look forward to seeing what you have planned next, I'll be waiting for you, she took a step closer and like earlier in the day, planted a kiss on his cheek, this time letting her lips linger for a moment longer before disappearing via a magical circle. The blonde placed the cups in the dishwasher and made his way back to the couch, letting himself fall across every cushion, that had gone better than expected and now he was even more determined to get on with the rating games, unfortunately, he couldn't simply challenge Roygun for her spot the way it had happened with Badiz. There were procedures to follow and a certain amount of matches he had to win before being able to formally challenge her, they were free to discuss a future battle along with the stakes ahead of time, much like they were going to do over dinner which still needed to be planned, but setting a date for the game itself was a different matter. His next, and first, official match as the third rank was in three days, he didn't remember who he was facing but he knew it wasn't any real challenge, he sat up. Still, even though they surely weren't a match for his peerage it wouldn't do good to write them off completely. Maybe I should go see Azazel soon, he should know about my next opponent if his information network really is that good, he thought to himself. Um, Naruto? He glanced towards the stairs to see Megaman's small head peering out into the living room. Yeah. He asked, if I go get my chips from the couch you're not gonna throw me up the stairs again are you? She asked. Naruto sweat dropped, oh, yeah sorry about that, I was in a bit of a hurry, he said as he grabbed the bag from inside the small compartment and tossed them over to her. Giving the place a quick once over to make sure everything was locked, he made his way up to his room and let himself fall on his bed shortly after putting on a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, he stared up at the ceiling for a few minutes going over the day had had and smiled to himself as he drifted off to sleep. 4x The first thing he did the following day after his morning routine was check the rating game schedule, pulling up the data he frowned at what was in front of him, if his memory served him correctly, it should be someone from the Amos clan but that wasn't the name that came up on his schedule. Riser Phoenix he read in his mind, all he knew of the young man was that he was related to Ruval Phoenix and wasn't anywhere near the top 10, so why was he being put on his list? At least the others he was scheduled to battle were somewhere in the vicinity, not exactly top 10 but above 30. Ruval was at least ranked number 9, not that he was really excited about him either but at least he would pose more of a challenge than his little brother, he wondered why exactly the switch had occurred but in the end, shrugged it off, it didn't matter. If anyone would know something it's Azazel, he said to himself, getting dressed, he let his peerage know he'd be out for a bit and to not destroy the house while he was gone. It didn't take long to reach the fallen angel's current hideout and surprisingly, Azazel wasn't the least bit bothered with his disappearing act the last time had been there, instead, he seemed excited, almost bouncing joyfully that had arrived. You got away last time but now that you're here we can begin, Azazel told him as they walked through the corridors of the hideout, Naruto turned his head slightly to stare at the silver-haired man that walked beside them with a bored look on his face. He shrugged, I told him you had left but it only left him more curious, thought you had something to hide and it made him curious, he already has all the equipment set up outside, he said in response to Naruto's stare. Ah was all the blonde could respond, up ahead, Azazel nodded in agreement with the white dragon emperor, Valley is right, I have everything set up, as much as I'd like to think you came here today for nothing more than to provide insights for me, something tells me there's another reason other than you feeling bad about ditching us, stand over there please, he asked of him once they made it outside. Naruto made his way to the center of the same field that had fought Valley in and looked up in time to see a barrier go up, off to the side were various machines that seemed to be rooted in place. I don't feel bad at all actually, Naruto corrected happily, I just remembered that you had a pretty good information network and I thought I'd make use of it, I need to know something about a few people. Oh? Azazel said with a raised eyebrow, who would those people be? He asked, grabbing a clipboard and making his way to stand next to the machines, well keep it simple today. I want to see the red blast you used against Valley, whenever you're ready, he added afterward. Naruto lifted a finger and began gathering the energy into the tip until it began to glow a steady red. Well, I'll soon need whatever you know about Roygun Belfagor and Dehauser, but the pressing matter today is Riser Phoenix. The energy continued building but the sphere in his finger didn't increase in size, the machines next to Azazel took on a blue tint as energy somehow entered them. The older man made a face he couldn't exactly describe and began jotting stuff down on the sheet had brought with him. Riser Phoenix is the third son of the Phoenix clan, he's not someone I'd imagine you taking an interest in, he commented, letting Naruto hear the unasked question. My original rating game opponent has been changed and now he's in, I thought maybe you'd have an idea as to how, why, and what you can tell me about his skill set. 
the blonde raised his finger slightly higher and released the built-up energy into one large explosion that managed to decimate most of the field they were in. Sorry. Azazel waved his apology off, his eyes shone with excitement and Naruto was curious how much he could have possibly written down off of that. Ignore it for now, can you do it again? He asked, as for how and why. Riser is known in the raiding game circuit, not like the people you're interested in but he has challenged some powerful people, my guess is he pulled some strings to get a match against you thinking that with Badiz out of the way you might be a possible win for him, idiotic for two reasons. Naruto began forming the attack once more and raised an eyebrow, even Valley was looking at the man with a curious stare. He didn't see the match so he doesn't know what he's getting into and secondly, he has a match with Sirzek's sister in nine days. Official? Unofficial, they've decided to settle their issues on their impending arranged marriage in the form of a raiding game, this has Lucifer's fingerprints all over it, the man replied. So her brother was doing his best to manipulate things to give his sister an out huh? An idea formed in his mind that might help move his own agenda along. And his abilities, he let the attack go off once more, causing even more destruction to the area than last time. It's all mathematical, the two young men heard Azazel mutter after the attack, he had a goofy looking smile on his face as he wrote, Naruto and Valley stared at each other and shrugged at the same time. Can you do the barrier ability? He asked politely, getting closer with a small handheld device. His abilities? The blonde shot back, huh? Oh right, well, he's inherited the Phoenix rapid regeneration and is a decent tactician but his peerage is weak, the only exception in my eyes would be his queen who can create bombs but realistically they should be no threat to you, the man replied. Valley stood next to Azazel and extended a hand in order to touch the same thing the older man was studying. So he's doing this for what? To increase his reputation? Experience? Valley chimed in, the man shook his head, it could be either of those honestly, it would be more useful to fight those within your skill level but in a way he does gain experience, it's only his pride that holds him back. Naruto hummed that the information had been given, it seemed he was right about not having to worry, apart from the strange tests, Azazel was making him do, something else had come from this. You said Rias was trying to break her engagement, yeah? That's right, reduce the barrier slightly, how grateful do you think Sirzex would be if someone were to help her out a bit? The blonde asked. The older man stopped writing and looked at him with interest. Very much so I would imagine, it's no secret the man loves his little sister more than anything, if you were to somehow guarantee her victory and freedom, I am sure he wouldn't mind pulling some strings for you if you wanted something reasonable. The fallen angel and white dragon emperor glanced at each other upon noticing the devious smile forming on Naruto's face. Something you want to share? Valley asked, crossing his arms. The blonde chuckled to himself, let's say I wanted to speed up the process to get a match with Roygun. How likely do you think that would be? Now it was Azazel's turn to smirk as he figured out what the blonde was after, you want to circumvent the procedure of the raiding game, you can't just challenge Roygun to a battle so you're hoping for one of the satans to sponsor the match. Valley frowned, even if you got one on your side, wouldn't Roygun still need to agree to a match for her spot? Plus you would have to wager something of equal value unless she agreed otherwise, and something tells me no one would go for that. The governor general nodded, you were able to get away with it last time because the wager on your part was greater than theirs, I don't think you would want to risk execution again, even if you were confident. Naruto pondered the mon's words and agreed, he only subjected himself to possible execution because there was no other alternative, this would be something he'd need to discuss with the woman in the future and he made a mental note to get in contact with her soon. Can you turn it off? Naruto did as instructed and tried not to get annoyed at the number of times the man poked his arm, seriously. How much could he really be learning just from watching him blow up his field? So is that enough for today? Naruto asked. Azazel tapped his chin with the pencil in his hand and asked him I know you have some more abilities, can you show me just one more? Preferably one of the more powerful ones, he requested. Naruto shook his head, maybe next time when you tell me about Roygun and Dehauser. The man laughed and nodded approvingly, using your techniques to keep me interested and as bargaining chips for information huh? Crafty, fine fine, though he'll tell you now. The type of information I have on them isn't easy to come by, you might need to show me a technique really worth the information. Whatever, I am sure we can come to an arrangement, the blonde agreed, the man began walking away muttering to himself excitedly about the data had gathered, Valley, he suddenly called out once Azazel was far enough away. Hum. Did you work on what I told you about? He asked. The man nodded, I have but it hasn't done much good, the fallen angels around here also rely on their magic more than their hand to hand capabilities. Naruto nodded and a picture of a certain fire user flashed through his mind along with a plan, a mischievous smile appeared on his face that neither of the other men missed. Do you think you could do me a favor? Depends, what do I get out of it? Stronger, 
The silver-haired man perked up, though he tried to look calm, the battle freaks were usually the easiest to convince to do something. Now it was Valis' turn to smirk, I am listening, I need you to get two very specific things for me and deliver them to me in eight days, in exchange, I'll have one of my stronger members help you out and I'll even give you a rematch whenever you're up for it. The promise of another battle as well as getting the chance to improve on an area clearly reeled him in, he could almost hear the gears turning in his head and unsurprisingly, he accepted, it's unfortunate I met you when I already had a full set, I would have easily offered you a spot with us, he admitted, hum, so what is it you need me to get? Thanks for watching.